Are you ready? Are you ready? Better strap in and get ready because it's Jay and Zach, Jay Retter and Zach Blogger, 12 to 3 on DAE. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Jay and Zach here on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. That's Zach Blodner. I'm Jay Retcher here with you. Hacksaw Johnny Dugas on the other side of the wall. Zach, so much to get into today. The Masters is upon us. And they are underway at Augusta after some inclement weather pushed back the start times. But we've got it rocking and rolling, so we'll keep you abreast of that situation all day long. We'll also have Jason Light's press conference at 1 o'clock today. The Buccaneers general manager addresses the media ahead of the draft in a couple of weeks uh, and then, of course, we got lightning action tonight at Amelie Arena against the Ottawa Senators. Rays finished their road trip 4-2, and two, and then the passing of O.J. Simpson, who we, we, well, we'll we get into that a little bit at 1245. How you doing on this Thursday? Everybody be safe out there because the weather is uh, kind of hairy here in the Tampa Bay area. So we appreciate everybody tuning in. Just make sure you're safe on the roads. And uh, if you got to take us with you, make sure you download that free iHeartRadio app. We are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. What's up, Zach? You're not ready. You're not, not ready. ready. You're I'm not a, ready, Zach. I'm in master's mode. I'm watching the master's TV. Mode. I'm, pre- I'm trying to pay attention to what we're doing, but I'm also He's doing it all. An eye on the goal. I, do you like the setup I got for us here Great today? job. It's Great not bad. job. Clap it up. It's not bad, this is why you. This is why you have to tune in right now to see what Zach has done. It's pretty solid here. So I got us ready for Augusta today. I, I think I was happy with this decision until we heard about the OJ news, and I was like, weird day to have a glove on. You know what I'm saying? Unless yeah, it's kind of strange. I was going for the uh, the golf look, and uh, I nailed it. However, having a glove on today that at least the glove fits, so there's a little bit of a difference. So you don't there. have to acquit. Yes. Uh, so between those two things and Jason Light, obviously speaking today later at 1 o'clock, there's just, man, I, I was telling you pre-show, like this week in general, every day we've walked in, and not that we don't, you know, always come up with three hours of strong programming anyways, But for me, I feel like this week we've really been blessed with a lot of sports news, sports things to react to, and uh, great time to be on the airwaves. Great time to be a sports fan at Tampa Bay, y'all. Be safe out there with the weather. I know, Jay, you just mentioned that. But outside of the weather, uh, good times can be had in the sports world. Rays win yesterday in L.A. against the Angels. Of course, you heard that right here on the home of Rays Baseball, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620, a 4-2 dub over the Angels. And, Zach, I asked you going into the weekend, what would be a successful road trip? These six games, three in Colorado, three in L.A., and you said four and two, and that's exactly what they did. They were able to win two of three against Colorado, two of three over the Angels. Um, so how do you feel now? Do you, are you? I don't feel like you're uh, – you, they gave you what you wanted, Mr. Blobner. You're but right. You're still – I still smell the pessimism from all the way over here. I don't feel worse. Okay. And that's similar. my story. I'm sticking okay. to it. Uh, listen, listen we, we went into this year. And I, I've said it for now, uh, you know, a few games. I said it for a week. I've said it for a couple of weeks. I'm saying it as they return home for a series against San Francisco, a team that's actually based in San Francisco, unlike the 49ers. I look at what the Rays have done, and they've stayed around 500. They're a game over 500 right now. That's all I can ask for before I can really say whether or not I believe in this team. Now, as constructed, I still am not buying stock in these Tampa Bay Rays. However, we do know that potentially there are guys that could be on the way to help, especially on the pitching side, in the months to come. So if we fast forward another week and they're still around 500, if we fast forward another month and they're still around 500, and we get into June and you're starting to see maybe some of these guys either returning or already have returned, then we can really diagnose whether this is a team that can do some damage, not only to get into the postseason, but once they're in the playoffs, because they've been there for the last five years with not a lot to show from it, Minus the World Series appearance there in the middle. So I, I'm about where I was. Um, there are players I'm higher on than I was at the beginning of it all. There are players I'm lower on. And you and I have kind of broken this down as we went through the, each series. Jose Caballero has some work to do on defense in terms mm-hmm. of the fundamentals. But he is a guy who is mashing at the plate yeah, right he's now. Spark, he's a spark plug for this team. He's a guy that I, I, I feel better about today than I did at the start of the season, than I did at the start of the road trip. The bullpen overall, I have, I definitely feel worse today than I did when the season started. And at the beginning of the road trip and throughout the road trip, I don't feel much more, if at all, confident in them as a whole. You know, Pete Fairbanks does the job last night. Uh, I'm glad my guy Kevin Kelly's back up with the club. But overall, 
I, I still think that there's a lot of inconsistencies in this bullpen, and until they're doing it can more consistently and more arms are showing more reliability, even the ones we've come to know over the last few years, it's hard for me to buy stock in the pen. A scoreless inning from Phil Maton as well as uh, Jason Adam before Pete Fairbanks. And Maton is a guy that we all thought going into the season, listen, a veteran, pitching big innings for Houston over the years. It seems like he's starting to find his groove, which I think is a positive sign. Only a four only four and a third innings from Littell yesterday. He was able to scatter six hits and only give up one run, but three walks which is a little surprising from him, a guy that's pretty damn accurate. Uh, but, yeah, four and two, and they just have to continue to, as you said, tread water. Just win these series. Keep winning series. If you keep doing that, you're going to keep up with the Joneses in the AL East. That's going to be the most important thing. But I want to go back to what you said about Caballero. Yeah, There's certain guys early on in this season, especially offensively, that have been doing whatever it takes to keep this team afloat, and he is one of them. Another guy is Jose Siri, because when you look at and another one is Ben Rortfred, and you look mm-hmm. at the bottom of the order yesterday, those guys were three for nine. And listen, if you're getting a three thirty three average from your bottom three hitters, you'll take it, right. especially when Yandy's only batting two oh eight, Randy's only batting two seventeen, but they both scored a run. So they came out and punched Soriano and the Angels in the mouth, scoring four runs in the first two innings and kind of held on the rest of the way. Listen, you have to be able to win in a multitude of ways. That's what teams have to do. And the Rays, even though they haven't been playing their best baseball early on, they're seven and six. So they just yeah. got to keep pushing, keep going forward. You got a tough series coming up against San Francisco this weekend. Um, Curtis Mead yesterday going 0 for 4. That was a little rough. You're going to see a lot more Curtis Mead now. He's going to get those opportunities against righties. We know how well he's done against left handed pitching. But if he wants to live up to the expectations that a lot of people had of him, he is going to have to hit right handers, especially. With the news that we got at the end of our show yesterday, we put it up on our social media. I'd love for you to go out there and take a look at Zach freaking out, his nose turning red. He was so mad. It's on all of our social media platforms at Jay Retro, at Zach on the mic, at Jay and Zach W D A E. Brandon Lau injured once again, a right oblique injury, and and you brought up a, a, a fair point. If how frustrating, how frustrated are you as a Rays fan that he's going on the IL once again and? I, we want to continue this conversation, but we also want you to contribute to that conversation by posting on our social media and also texting us 82945 on the Bartow 4 da text line. Give us a call, 888-546-4620. And again, we are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can leave your comments there. Zach, I know you are frustrated, but there's a lot of other people that are, It's they're almost apathetic about it. Just, no, I'm not really frustrated because I was assuming that this was going to happen anyway. And that's kind of sad for a guy that, really does have the potential to be one of the best offensive second basemen in the game. But the biggest thing with him is just he can't stay healthy every year. It's something else. If it's not his back, now it's his oblique. Last year when he got hurt, uh, the broken hand right before the playoffs, that was tough because he was swinging the bat well. Mm-hmm. He was playing well. I think his batting average is like 180. It's below 200 this year. The big grand slam was awesome game two of the year. But outside of that, he hasn't been in one of his good grooves. So when you see a guy like Brandon Lau get hurt and he's batting below 200, it's hard for me to lose sleep over it. Yesterday, I I, I knew it was something that was going to frustrate me. I tried to say, let's wait until the next segment. And you, you threw it on me and I was irritated. I am frustrated. Look, and that's raw emotion. That's how I feel about these conversations about Brandon Lau. And again, Jay, we were doing this last year midseason. Right. We were talking about how keep him, keep him away. Let Taylor Walls be the guy, whoever. Throw whoever you want. Now you have Curtis Mead in there, and I know a tough night at the plate for him yesterday, but Johnny Aranda will be back soon. That's a guy that can maybe play some second base. Um, try some other guys out there. Rosario, you've been pounding the podium to yeah. get him more reps. And listen, it seems like they're pretty set with Caballero, whether we agree or not or whatever we thought heading into this season. You can't take him out of the lineup now. Well, maybe that's an opportunity for Rosario to get some more at-bats yeah. and be more of an everyday player, right? Uh, I, I am fine with using the other three guys at second base. And that, again, includes Aranda, who hopefully will be back at some point next week. I, I just, A, he's unreliable, Brandon Lyle. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's just, an, and that's the word. Let's just say there. He's yeah. unreliable. Whether it's health, whether it's hitting. I, I mean, I just, I don't know what part of Brandon Lau you're buying stock in these days. These days. I, I just don't know. Unless it's that he will be injured, unless it's that he will strike out more than you want him to. Like, those are the types of things that are associated with him. And and I'm tired of talking about the potential of what he can bring to this team. He had a great year in 2019 at the plate, a slugger. He's got a sweet swing. But when you look at him, 
and you look at collectively what he's brought to this team, postseason aside, because there's nothing there, it is not, the juice is not worth the squeeze. And it hasn't been. And I love when people say, well, the potential. He's 29 years old. I mean, what are we talking about with potential, right? I mean, it, it, I don't want to hear anything about potential anymore. I'm done with that. He's got to stay healthy. The most important part of ability is availability, reliability. He's betting 185 this season. Last year, about a 231. We keep going, well, he could be a 30. He can be. Not he is. He can be a 30 home run, 100 RBI guy. Yeah, sure. If he played 130 games, he'd probably get up to there, but he's not. He's not healthy. So I, I really think we're starting to get close to the conversation of when are the Rays really going to turn the page? And here's a text from the 813. Time to move on from B. Lau. Too much young talent and waiting to keep waiting on B. Lau from three years ago. Another one from the 813. What's up, fellas? I wish I could say I'm surprised that Brandon Lau is hurt again. I think it's time for the Rays to part ways. Even when he's healthy, he's very hit and miss. We need someone more consistent lineup if we want to be successful in the playoffs. And I know people will talk about, like, all right, you'll just move on from trade him. Who's going to want a guy that gets hurt all the time? Who's going to want a guy that's super inconsistent? That's the thing. It's like, who, who you got to be able to, people aren't just going to give you something like, yeah, let me take your injured second baseman that is the, one of the streakiest players in the game. That's not a very enticing acquisition for teams to, to make. And, and you want to trade with the Rays? People are petrified of trading with the Rays. Look at what the Caballero deal, right? That's another one. People are like, yeah, look at Luke Rayleigh's batting average. Do you know what Luke Rayleigh's hitting? It's under 200. Look at what Jose Caballero's doing. So you think people are going to trade and be like, yeah, yeah, we'll take Brandon Lau. Not a chance. No. And again, he's a guy that the Rays haven't even been open to trading. That's one of the craziest parts to me. For as flexible as this organization is in terms of moving talent, moving names, moving roster pieces, we haven't even heard them whisper about the potential of Brandon Lau being traded. They don't even want to move him down in the lineup. How many months... And I say months did we spend last year, Jay, when he was healthy, mm -hmm. saying, why is he batting in the top four? So you want to talk about the Rays moving on from Brandon Lau. They won't even move him in the lineup. They won't even split time with him when he's healthy. But they have to because he's lefty. That's that's the big thing. When he is in there, he has the potential to do, you know, <laughs> hit the ball out of the yard. And really, and we saw it earlier this season when he hit the grand slam. And he's left-handed. Mm -hmm. This team isn't flush with left-handed bats. You saw the Yankees make a just a terrible, terrible attempt at constructing a lineup the last couple of years by just being so predominantly right-handed. And now you look at him. Last night's game notwithstanding, now they're, what, 10-3? and three? And you look at the balance in their lineup now that Juan Soto and Alex Verdugo in there. You need balance. You need righties. You need lefties. You need to make sure that you're making life a living hell for the people you're going against. And to me, at times, when you look at this raised lineup, Lau's the only threat from the left-handed side of the plate, and that's scary. And now he's out, and this is why people are so high in the Rays organization for a guy like John Aranda and guys like Josh Lowe because they give them a different Other element. Options. Because you know Yandy, you know Randy, you know Siri. Like the, a lot of these guys are right-handed. Isak Paredes, Harold Ramirez. It's a lot of right-handed bats. You need balance. And I understand that, and I understand how analytically driven this team is. I, I just... I uh, even knowing all those things, I'm kind of at the point, at least from where I sit, looking at it and being like, I don't care. And I know that that's easy for me to say because mm -hmm. I'm not building this roster. But when it comes to Brandon Lau, like I'm at the I don't care point. You can sell me on the fact that he's the lefty bat and that he has the potential. And like, I get all of that. I understand it. And look, again, you talk about roster turnover. A lot of marketing has been put into him over the last few years. He's a the dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah. Every dog has his day. We're still waiting on Brandon's. I, I just. I'm at the point where I don't care. Like I, as a, as a person watching this team and enjoying this team and wanting to see this team succeed, I I don't care about the reasoning. I'm tired of it. I'm Zach tired of watching care. Brandon so out there. He's over it. I am. I don't know how any Rays fan would feel otherwise. More frustrated with KK when he was here, or Brandon Lau now. Mm, I'm gonna say Brandon Lau now. Okay. Because the one saving grace for Kevin Kiermeyer. <clears throat> Is that at the, especially at the tail end there? He was good in the playoffs. Yeah, that one year. Yeah, I know. But you think about what he did. That's, but that's the same argument that you have with Brandon Lau for the regular season. That right. one year. And I think for me, if you show, and I think this is probably plausible to argue in any sports argument. And I would see if you feel the same way. All the frustrations we have for players 
can literally disappear if they do something in the playoffs. Yeah. At any point. It's a saving grace. Think about, uh, I mean, and I'm trying to think of some like extreme examples. Uh, David Tyree, right, mm-hmm. for the Giants. Yeah, but there was low expectations for a guy like that. But that's what I'm saying. He has that catch in the Super Bowl. I mean, look at the, uh, He's I, a legend now. I would actually say the guy that threw him the football. Yeah, I mean, Eli there's Manning. no way Eli Manning's even close to anywhere of a Hall of Famer. And then in the playoffs for two years, yeah. he turned into freaking Superman. And they two Super Bowl MVPs. Clayton Kershaw was another guy. Brett Phillips. Yeah, but those guys, but you're talking about guys that are low expectations. I know. Guys. Those are bench guys you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Brandon Lau's a starter. He's like, he's an all star. I don't know an example that I can use outside. I think of him. Kershaw is a good one because he was a Cy Young winner and then he just absolutely yeah. stunk in the playoffs. They, Eli, win, they did win the one, though, prior to that win in the World Series. Who? Ver Kershaw. No, he's got one title. That's what I'm saying. Prior Against to that, the race. That's it. Prior to that World Series win, that was the chatter with him. I mean, he at least Awful. has he the got, ring now. He got ripped. He still has the ring, though. Yeah, now, but I'm saying you were asking, yeah. like, give me a yeah. similar story. It was Kershaw yeah. up until then. That's the big one in recently. Well, I'm thinking of the inverted version is what I was talking about, though. Who's the guy that doesn't reach the expectations in the regular season but shows up in the playoffs? Yeah. That, you, it's hard because, to find a guy like that. It is because usually guys like that don't get as many opportunities <laughs> as a guy like Brandon Lau. Yeah. I think I think it's a good question, though, to ask Rays Nation out there. Who was more frustrating in the last five to ten years with the Tampa Bay Rays? Was it a guy like Kevin Kiermaier or was it a guy like Brandon Lau? And you say Brandon Lau, right? Yeah, and, and I'll admit, like, it's hard not to be a prisoner in the moment. Of course, but, uh, all right, yeah, yeah. so, the, and we know Brandon Lau, right? Because people look back at that one year. Oh, that one year. That one year he was so good. But the injuries have kind of derailed his success, and we know how streaky he is. And where was right? KK batting most of his career in Tampa Towards Bay? Towards the bottom of the lineup, true, right? But there's people that wondered... If Kevin Kiermaier was, if he laid down a couple more bunts and he thought about hitting the ball the other way, yeah. that he was the leadoff hitter that this team was missing. Yeah. If he didn't try to hit as many home runs, right, that people would say KK could have been a leadoff hitter. Remember, we had him on the station years ago. Yeah, bunting's not really my thing. And Kevin Kiermaier jumping for balls in center field, that kind of made people mad. Like, he didn't need to jump for that. And KK had a long injury history as well. Mm-hmm. So there was he was a pretty polarizing guy. I think we could agree that those were two... Those are probably the two most polarizing rays in the last decade. You agree with that? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, KK was the face of the franchise after Longoria for you know a half a decade or plus here. In in between it all, and you know, I, I think the thing with Brandon is he's not necessarily been the face, but he's one of the faces. Mm-hmm. He when they gave him this that year, deal, but this year we heard it a lot more. Yeah. The same things that we were hearing about Kevin Kiermaier when new players would come here. Kevin Kiermaier was the guy that reached out. Kevin Kiermaier was the guy that led them. Unprovoked, they would bring him up. This year, for the first time, and we heard it here on the show from a couple of different players, b Lau. b Lau's that guy. So it's kind of crazy how their careers were paralleled in that way. But, again, we just said it. They're the two most polarizing rays in the last 10 years. And who frustrated you more? Was it b Lau or was it Kevin Kiermaier? Because I think it's a, it's a decent split. And to no fault of their own, a big issue here in Tampa Bay, we complain about guys not getting paid. And when you see a guy get paid... His expectations on any team are going to go up, but especially with the Tampa Bay Rays. Kiermaier was making more money than anybody for most of his career. I think they both got paid, like, but, 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 but that, in relation to the Rays. That, how, the Rays pay, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying, though. So, like, Kiermaier making all that money, I mean, that was what it always boiled down to, is the Rays don't pay anybody. They're paying this guy. He's never on the field. He can't hit the baseball. Well, that same argument, I think, is being applied to Brandon Lau in a lot of ways. And I remember being, I was uber critical of that contract being given to Brandon mm-hmm. Lau because I was like, the Rays don't do this for anybody. And they choose this guy, an unproven dude out of nowhere. And then he comes in and has that season in 2019 and everybody's, you know, old takes exposing me and, and re-quoting that video and stuff. And they're like, oh, nailed that one, Zach. And then the next four years now, five years now, I feel like I was actually more on point with that th- than I even thought at the time. Because again, in this long contract that they gave Brandon Lau, Outside of one year, it has not been worth the money. Text here on the Bartow 4 DA text line. More frustrated with Lau or, yeah, Lau. KK was at least a stud on D and stole bases. From the 727, KK was hurt a decent amount, but dude was playing ball. Lau hasn't even showed us his true form. Uh, at least the KK was a leader in the locker room. That's also from the 813 as well. We were talking about guys kind of stepping up in the postseason. Nick Foles. Great. I think, yeah. that, I think that fits the bill. Yeah. You know, he was never going to be MVP of the league in terms of what he was doing. Um, and you think about him coming in, you know, whether it be because of he was a backup, right, for Carson Wentz and stuff. Yeah. 
So he's a guy who nobody necessarily had high expectations for, but steps into the playoffs. And you would, if you only watch Nick Foles postseasons, you would think he was a top five quarterback yeah. his entire career. I think, I don't know, because again, just like the other guys we mentioned, he was a backup. Yeah. The expectations for him are low. I think That's maybe, crazy. how about a guy like Joe Flacco? People were wondering if he was elite. He had that one great postseason run for them, for the Ravens, and helped win them a Super Bowl. I still it's, think it's it's, it's, hard. it's I, easier to think about the guys that, not it, the inverted version. Yeah, it is. Like Aaron Rodgers, yeah. right? Balls out, MVP, loses in the playoffs. But it's hard to think about guys that don't perform in the regular season and then ball out in the playoffs because they don't usually get those. You don't talk about them. No, well, you don't get those opportunities. Those people that kind of show up out of nowhere are usually guys that yeah. are coming off the bench, backups, guys that are surprising people. You don't underperform in the regular season because, and then ball out in the postseason because you don't get that chance. You're just, you're a guy that's like, all right, well, your expectations are low and you don't do it. Could you say until last year that Randy was that guy? Because think about it. He had that one giant postseason and we kept waiting for him to be an all-star mm -hmm. given he was last year and we love Rose Arena. But I think until that all-star season last year, I know you were very yeah. adamant about him needing to be an all-star outside of the postseason. Exactly. Yeah, it's just, his was a, nobody does what he, Nobody can do what he did in his rookie season. Like he's putting up Babe Ruthie in numbers as a, as a as a rookie, and when you don't play that many games, it's hard to say yeah. the track record for a guy like he's a bad postseason performer. Well, he only played two games. You have a rough stretch. Yeah. Just unfortunately for the race, everybody had the same rough stretch at the exact same time. Right, we know what you're frustrated with on the text line. We're not going to get into that as well. All right, when we're gonna we're gonna hit this break. When we come back on the other side, lightning. Hockey tonight at Amelie Arena against the Ottawa Senators. Who is not going to be in the lineup tonight, or they're definitely doubtful who's going to be between the pipes. We'll tell you on the other side, as well as what the league is saying on our Tampa Bay Lightning. But first, Jay and Zach, for the Golden Diamond Source. Golden Diamond Source has the largest collection of fine jewelry under one roof. And when it comes to April Burstone jewelry, diamonds take center stage. The Golden Diamond Source's Diamond Days program gives you up to 20% off April's birthstone jewelry. This year marks the Golden Diamond Source's 40th anniversary as your jewelry destination, and they only deal with natural diamonds. It takes billions of years to form natural diamonds. You don't want something that was made in a factory just two weeks ago. And for those first-time diamond buyers, they've got the Golden Diamond Source first-time buyer program where they'll educate you about the four C's and all the different shapes and styles. A tradition unlike any other. No, not the Masters. The Golden Diamond Source allowing you to trade up for bigger, better diamonds. Because diamonds at the Golden Diamond Source never lose their value. You can always trade up for bigger, better diamonds, day, month, year, whenever, after buying it. Spring clean, not only your house, but your jewelry collection, y'all. You got to just sitting around collecting dust. We'll go find out how much your Golden Diamonds are worth today. Consider that the Golden Diamond Source can also maintain and insure your jewelry. They can professionally clean it, check the settings, make any necessary repairs to keep your jewelry in top shape. If you're going to buy a diamond, do what we do here on Jay and Zach. Make sure it's a Golden Diamond Source diamond. The Golden Diamond Source, 300 Alma Tarun in Clearwater. Always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. Tomorrow, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner, home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Coverage starts at 5.30 on the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE traffic update. In Pinellas County, have an accident at 70th Avenue North and 67th Street. Southbound US 19 had a crash at Innisbrook. In Hillsborough County, there's wreck westbound on Limebaugh at Plantation Boulevard. A vehicle spun out. It's on the right shoulder of the southbound Veterans Expressway at Anderson Road. And if you see traffic problems, call the traffic tip line at 866-545-9595. From the Traffic Center, I'm Daisy Ash. This report is sponsored by Marotta New Homes, Tampa Bay. Discover more at at Murata, more fantastic new homes, more exciting amenities, and more things to do with your family. Visit America's largest human-made lagoon. Experience more. Visit MuradaStayK.com today. t Grads here for my friends over at Green Tech Roofing and Solar. As a homeowner, I know the importance of having a strong roof over your head, and that's exactly what my guys over at Green Tech Roofing and Solar do. They're the number one roofing solution in the Tampa Bay area, offering free inspections. They offer a wide selection, asphalt shingles, tile, metal roofing options as well. They do residential and commercial. They have over 300 five-star reviews. So check them out. Visit their website. Get an accurate assessment. Go to greentechroofing.com.
Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season. With Major League Baseball, golf, pro basketball, and hockey playoffs, stats, news, and scores are right at your fingertips. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today from your desktop or mobile device to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Ford. You've heard me say a million times that we are the premier place to buy your new or pre-owned vehicle. What I don't get to say often enough is that Bartow Ford covers all your automotive needs. For example, our body shop. We have the largest body shop in Polk County and the most certified technicians. If your vehicle has damage and in need of repair, don't forget it's your vehicle and it's your choice. Tell your insurance company that you want to bring it to Bartow Ford, where we're different and we prove it. I'm Dan Morgan. One question many people wonder is, does the law for my hire for my injury case matter? Of course it does. At Morgan & Morgan, we've invested millions into making sure your experience from first call to your settlement is so easy. You can literally start your case right from your couch in just a few clicks. You'll also be able to text your case staff and lawyer anytime you need. We're America's largest injury law firm for a reason. Injured, the choice is easy. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on the driver who treats the highway like a racetrack and the shoulder like a passing lane. Why pay a rate based on anyone else? Get one based on you with DriveWise from Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California, subject to terms and conditions. Rates are determined by several factors, which vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for purposes of rating. While in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Generally, safer drivers will save with DriveWise. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates in Northbrook, Illinois. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. Bosch Tools is the proud sponsor of the 7th Inning Stretch during every Rays radio broadcast. Engineered for efficiency, comfort, and ease, Bosch Tools are built to keep workers feeling productive and off the injured list. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. Your home sold in 14 days. Guaranteed at DuncanDuo.com. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Welcome back into Jay and Zach here on 95.3 WDAE. I'm Zach Blobner. He's Jay Retcher as we hit the ice and talk a little bit about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Just how they're viewed league-wide. Didn't get a chance to get to these results yesterday, so excited to kind of dig into them a little bit more with you as the Bolts also will be back in action this evening. They're taking away on Ottawa. It'll be at Emily Arena, so it's a home game. But the NHL Players Association conducts a player poll each year. And... During this voting, in the regular season, you get 639 NHL players surveyed on 15 hockey-related questions, players weighing in on a variety of topics, including the top positional players, most complete player, best playmaker, best style, toughest arena to play in, and more. I'm still upset. You're upset? Yeah, no best style for a media member. Can I get in on this? You keep, hey, someday. You keep going Damn after it. We'll get, we'll get it going. Killing me, Smalls. Now, the cool thing about this is that there were several Lightning players that not only won categories, but were at least mentioned amongst the top five in certain categories. Uh, out the gates, very much on the forefront of these results. The first question that they have, if you need to win one game, who is the goalie you want on your team? Overwhelmingly, from the almost 700 players polled, 46.92% picked Andre Vasilevsky. The next closest, Igor Shosturkin, 6.49%, 6 just to show the disparity. So there are some other names thrown in here, but almost half of the league would still go with Vasi. 
Yeah, not surprising there. Three seasons in a row now for Vassie. He received 289 of the 639 votes. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, even though he was banged up to start the season and missed the first 20, it don't matter. Because he looked good, and everybody knows that the pedigree is there. He's still young. He's still got many years ahead of him. Two Stanley Cups, the Conn Smythe, the Vezina. Uh, watch out, because he is, is still a problem after all these years. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for me here, Jay, is it's not even close. Right? Like, if Igor was at, like, 30% or some 25% or whoever the number two would be, I mean, obviously it's him here, I would be like, okay. But I, I think the fact that there's such a gap still between him and the next viewed goalie you want in that situation, right. it's just goes to show, and, and we talked about this a lot the last couple of weeks, why when the Lightning do get into the postseason, nobody's going to take them lightly. Whether they're a wild card, whether they're the top seed, wherever they line up and however they line up, with Vassy between the pipes, it's hard not to go that route. Agreed. Agreed. So there were some other votes that we saw coming across. Uh, going down the list here, and we'll get to it. This is a category that one of the Lightning players was in the top five, and there's another category that this player won. But for this one, if you need to win one game, who is the forward you want on your team? Connor McDavid wins that one, 48.71%. Crosby, 11.58%. Third place, they got Nathan McKinnon. Nikita Kucherov, though, voted fourth. Right, which is, I, I think was awesome that he was on the list with some of those great players. Artemi Panarin came in in fifth. Then you look at, if you need one one game, who's the defenseman you want? Kale McCarr, number one, 56.38. And then Victor Hedman, number two. So the Lightning, well-representative Cooch was coming in fourth were best stick handler behind Connor McDavid, Pat Kane, and Jack Hughes. And then you look at one that I think is not surprising, but I think is really an indication of the respect that Nikita Kucherov has. Which player is the best playmaker? It wasn't Connor McDavid, wasn't Leon Dreisaitl, Artemi Panarin, or Mitch Marner. It was Nikita Kucherov, 28.47% over Connor McDavid, 20.91%. That's a big deal because a lot of times playmakers are centermen, but you look at the playmakers like on this list, three of the five of them are wingers with Panarin, Marner, and Kuch. And I love that because... Connor McDavid is the best hockey player. He yep, is. Easily. Not to say he's having the best season, because again, we're looking at a guy like Kucherov, who, who's also right up there with him. But that's not even the only category that a Lightning player beat McDavid. Which player is most difficult to play in their own end? Victor Hedman took yeah. that category at 20.32% over Connor McDavid. So <laughs> Connor whether, McDavid's in like every single one. <laughs> naturally. But mm -hmm. to see a couple categories here where offensively Kucherov takes the cake, and then, you know, in terms of defensively, uh, Victor Hedman's right there. I, I mean, these are just guys that, again, we mentioned Vassie being between being between the pipes, but I think we're so spoiled with it. And we always talk about this in sports, right? When you're in really in life, when you're so close to the fire, sometimes maybe mm -hmm. you you miss some things or you get so a, close to the forest to see the trees, yeah. right? So, and I think this is a scenario where we're all very appreciative, but it's a nice reminder that league wide, whether it's Vassie, whether it's Kucherov, whether it's Victor Hedman, there are still absolute stars and studs and some of the best in the game right here in Tampa Bay. And they've been here their entire career. This is the biggest surprise for me. If you need to win a faceoff, who would you pick? The Lightning had a player on that list. Did you see that? Ryan O'Reilly first. Sidney Crosby second. <laughs> Claude Giroux third. Luke Glendening <laughs> tied with Jordan Stahl. Wow. Respect. Dude is a faceoff monster, man. I appreciate that. A lot. Uh, which player has the most style? Cooch came in fourth. Ironically enough, he's the only one, I think, that didn't actually just, I don't know if he has the greatest style or not. Um, he's the only one that doesn't have a picture of him in so in like strange. a, uh, what you might call it, a suit or like yeah. a different outfit. So you just look at the respect from around the league, and, and I hearken back to the interviews that we've had in the last two weeks with Greg Wyshynski and Chris Johnston. Of course, we hear it from our guy Eric Erlinson every Wednesday here on Jay and Zach. The respect for guys like Nikita Kucherov and Victor Hedman and, and Steven Stamkos around the league. And, Zach, I really got the opportunity to be able to hear that myself when I went to the All-Star game in Toronto a couple of months ago, and especially from a guy like Nate McKinnon. Nate McKinnon, is he's like a Lightning fan. You should have heard him. And this is the last couple of years. I remember speaking to him at the All-Star game last year yeah. uh, down in South Florida and also at the uh, Stanley Cup final a couple of years ago. He watched what the Lightning did to be successful. He is uh, it's an amazing uh, feat or just it's an amazing sight to see when you hear from arguably the second best player maybe on the planet, Nathan McKinnon, the adoration that he has for a guy like Nikita Kucherov. If you watch McKinnon and you watch McDavid, what do you see? 
You see Bull in a China shop. You see a guy flying around the ice. You see a guy just physically imposing his will on the opposition. And that's why they win. They just blow past people. But what do you see from Nikita Kucherov? You see a guy slowing it down. You see a guy playing at a completely different speed than everybody else. You're seeing a guy with eyes. with a, he, he has eyes in the back of his head. The passes that he makes, you're not even thinking about. The TV cameraman can't even keep up with Nikita Kucherov's passing skill set. He does it in a different way than anybody else in the National Hockey League. And I think that's what uh, part of the reason why he endears himself to all of us and why we think he's the best player in the game. Because he's putting up all these points, and he's not dominating people with physicality. He's not dominating people with speed and flash. He's dominating them with skill and IQ. Who's smarter on the ice than Nikita Kucherov? Who knows where all 12 players are on the ice better than him? In the game right now, I would argue nobody. I'm with you. And I think we touched on this a little bit yesterday. The sad part is he's having his best season in a Tampa Bay Lightning sweater. Yeah. And he's already won the Hart Trophy. He's already won the Art Ross Trophy. And he's going to maybe win one of them this year. But we're pretty much resided to the fact that it's going to be Nathan McKinnon. Like, he is going to win MVP of the league. And it's crazy to me that Kucherov is playing the way that he is, already having the career that he does, having the national recognition that we see here. And we've heard from two different national analysts and Greg Wyshynski and Chris Johnston in the last few weeks that admit they would vote for Kucherov over McKinnon. So, like, everything points to Kucherov being the MVP, but we also all... For, it, like it basically came to grips with the fact that he won't win MVP. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a weird dynamic to me, Jay, that we can talk about him and, and locally and nationally and all have these chats and see players voting him up. And yet he's not winning the trophy this year. Like they're just going to give it to McKinnon. It, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't compute. Well, it's, we have an unfortunate, you know, we, we've been saying the word like pandemic with arm injuries. I don't think, I think that's a little bit too rash when it comes to this, but there seems to be a large disconnect when it comes to sports and the people that vote on them. Like a and, pattern? Well, think about it. What do we when did we have this conversation a couple months ago on? Pro Bowl. And Baseball Hall of Fame. So there is a huge disconnect in sports between the people that actually play the game and the people that vote on who the best are. Who votes on the Hart Trophy? That's writers, right? Yeah, the, I mean, we have to look up because it's different. It's kind of funky. With, Is it like a variety of I people? think it's the writers, pre-HWA. Certain writers vote for certain awards in the Pro Hockey Writers Association. But think about it, Zach. We've been talking about Pro Bowls and All Pros. Yeah, it's the Writers and, Association. Okay, Pro Bowls and All Pros and Hall of Fames and now trophies. And it just, it, you, you kind of wonder... If it's already figured out before the end of the season, even though the guy is probably not going to finish in first, speaking about Nathan McKinnon, shouldn't we be adjusting the way that these awards are voted for? Why are the why is there apathy coming from Chris Johnson and Greg Wyshynski? How come they both believe, and these are two guys that have been following hockey for a long time, how come those two guys, who are two of the more reputable names in the sport, know that when they talk to some of their contemporaries, People are giving it to Nathan McKinnon because it's somewhat of a, a career achievement award. Just like Mark andre Fleury won the Vezina a couple years ago and he didn't play that many games. Well, he's never won it before. Like, what are we even doing? And it's almost like an accepted thing. Like, oh, that's the way it goes. Like, why? That's stupid. We should accept that Gary Sheffield's not in the Hall of Fame. We should accept that Antoine Winfield Jr., who's an all-pro, wasn't a pro bowl. No, it's, it's ridiculous. These motives that these writers have, it, it's mind-boggling. They hold all the power. They wield the power. What is it? The, the, the pen is mightier than the sword. That is no more truer than when you're voting for certain type of awards. And I know people say, oh, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It is a big deal when it comes to how much these guys are making and what it means for their Hall of Fame candidacy. Like, these things matter, whether you believe it or not, whether you think it's trite or not, whether you think it's not the most important thing. That's fine. But it's not about you. It's about these people's resumes, and they want it to be as best as humanly possible. You strive for the greatest achievements at work, don't you? You don't want to just be like, yeah, well, it is what it is. No. If you have an opportunity to reach a high goal and set the bar and be the man or be the woman at work, that's what you do. 
You don't just settle for mediocrity. That's not what professional athletes do. No, I, I hear you. And, and, and these things, you know, they play a role not only in a lot of times we talk about it in terms of a guy's career in helping that guy get to someday their Hall of Fame in their sport. And the Sheffield thing is part of it. But even for the guys that are going to be Hall of Famers, you know, are they first ballot? Where do they rank amongst the greats? These awards matter. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you're having an argument or you're having a sports debate and spoiler alert, if you're listening to Jay and Zach right here on DAE, you, you probably have a lot of sports debates right. in your life. Mm-hmm. It's part of what we do. It's a part of why you listen. If that's the case and you're having those arguments, it's a lot easier to to go to bat for a guy like Nikita Kucherov if he's won two heart trophies versus one. Right. Especially when you're, you know, putting him against his peers. You're putting him against Nathan McKinnon. After, at the end of their career, well, who had the best career? Well, McKinnon, they got the cup, obviously, over the Lightning. Well, Kuch has two of them at this point. And he already has won an MVP trophy. So McKinnon hasn't. And, and again, I think it goes back to the front end where, look, if you're in Colorado and you're going to bat for your guy, Nathan McKinnon, one of the things that you feel probably slighted at is that he's arguably the best, second best player in the league behind mm-hmm. Connor McDavid. Well, winning a Hart Trophy goes a long way in that argument in terms yeah. of like being that guy. But that doesn't mean that you just give it to him to, to add to that argument. But I know in Colorado, they probably feel similarly. Like, he deserves to win. Oh, yeah. One of the producers out in Colorado, all he does every day is put propaganda out for Nathan McKinnon <laughs> and hating on Nikita Kucherov. Well, I don't want to hate on Nathan McKinnon. The damn propagandists. <clears throat> just building up Nikita Kucherov. That's all. Yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference in a lot of things. And uh, we'll continue to break it down as we see this season come to a close. Again, the lightning on the ice tonight at Amelie Arena. They'll take on Ottawa. Breaking news earlier today, we find out that O.J. Simpson has passed away. How do you remember O.J., a complicated individual on and off the field? A lot to talk about as we share our thoughts on the subject, and we'll ask you as well. Shoot us a text on the Bartow 4 DAE text line, 82945. Start the text with DAE, 888-546-4620. You can also find us video feeds on YouTube on Twitch and on Facebook at 95.3 WDAE, where Jay and Zach will be right back. Wait, and then first, we have to let you guys know that the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for portions of Hillsborough, Pinellas, Pasco, and Hernando until 1230. So uh, we know that's past, but we know that there's a lot of inclement weather out there, gusts between 50 and 60 miles an hour. So please, out there, everybody, be safe and Listen, this is kind of a perfect foray into my conversation about my friends at The Rhino. Save time and money with The Rhino. I was just talking to our friend Kim Kuzmata, one of our AEs. She has worked with The Rhino and their fully enclosed gutter system, which provides ultimate protection. This is the time when you're dealing with rain. You don't want to be dealing with clogging and a hassle. And this is why you have to call my friends at The Rhino. All right, maybe not today, but tomorrow when the weather's a lot better. And think about it. Think about some of the hassle that you're going to deal with if you have clogging in your gutters. They have a solution that's going to be a home run for your budget. And if you act now, you can get a $300 service discount. You can't beat that. Plus, they offer military and senior discounts as well. <clears throat> Don't wait. Go to the Rhino.com. Schedule your services today. They're here to bat for you. This is Tampa Bay Sports Radio, 95.3 WDAE and AM620, home of the best Bolts coverage. Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized inflation adjusted and tax advantage retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench. So call the Hollands at 727-469-7939 or visit AskTheHollands.com Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. 
The iHeart Media team is growing, and we're looking for experienced salespeople to join our team. If you're interested in working in a fast-paced environment and representing the biggest brands in media, go to iHeartMediaCareers.com and type Tampa. iHeart Media is an equal opportunity employer, and you may be the next rock star seller for our team. Go to iHeartMediaCareers.com and type Tampa and apply today. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Ford. You've heard me say a million times that we are the premier place to buy your new or pre-owned vehicle. What I don't get to say often enough is that Bartow Ford covers all your automotive needs. For example, our body shop. We have the largest body shop in Polk County and the most certified technicians. If your vehicle has damage and in need of repair, don't forget it's your vehicle and it's your choice. Tell your insurance company that you want to bring it to Bartow Ford, where we're different and we prove it. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. They pretty much hurt doing anything. I couldn't ride a bicycle. You don't have your life because you don't have your mobility. So when Patrick heard about QC Kinetics and their non-invasive regenerative treatments for pain, no waiting, he called them immediately. There's no downtime. There's no rehab. That was the tipping point for me. I didn't have to take any drugs. I didn't have to rehab. Before considering surgery, check out QC Kinetics all-natural treatment options that restore and repair damaged joint tissue in your knees, hips, shoulders, and back. If you have knee replacement surgery and then the knee is not yours and there's no guarantee that that's going to be successful. QC Kinetics. Patients around the country are raving about the results. They're getting back their mobility, taking back Back their lives with no downtime, no drugs, and no surgery. Don't wait. Call QC Kinetics today for your complimentary consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. Locations in Bradenton, St. Pete, Lakeland, and Brandon, 813-305-3000. Hi, this is Earl Ron. I'm the president of New South Windows Solutions. What I like people to understand about our company is what's unique about us. We manufacture, we install, we guarantee. We go out of our way to make it easy. Going on now, save 35% off factory direct windows and doors. Visit NewSouthWindow.com. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial-free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American idiot. A commercial-free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports and Pulse Nation for over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Welcome back, Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM620, one of the biggest stories in the news uh, today, whether it's sports or otherwise, is that Former NFL player O.J. Simpson passed away today at the age of 76. His family mentions that he passed away from cancer. And, man, this is a guy that you want to talk about a complicated life. That is probably one of the more under, one of the biggest understatements that I've ever made on this show. I mean, you talk about a guy whose football career just accolades, incredible NFL MVP, All-Pro, AP Athlete of the Year, you know, uh, Hall of Famer, college football Hall of Famer. He was great at USC, great at uh, with Buffalo as well. But after that, his acting career, Naked Gun, like he was Dragnet. He did a little bit of everything, right? And then, which a lot of people kind of our age and younger remember, is the, the O.J. Simpson trial back in 1994. And, you know, he was acquitted of murder of his uh, his ex-wife and, and her friend. And it's just Wow, man, what a crazy... And then afterwards, Zach, writing the book of If I Did It and taking to social media and almost giving advice to people and just seeming like a guy that really was out of touch with reality, no self-awareness, and now he's gone at the age of 76. Again, what a complicated life. 
Yeah, and, and I think the two things that kind of stick out to me is, A, you have to be a damn good football player for that to be something people still mention despite what you did. Mm-hmm. Whether you were found innocent or not, like, he's a murderer. Like, he is. And, and that is the thing that sticks out most to me that I think of when I see him. You're right, no spatial awareness, but, again, for a guy that did what he did, convicted or not, I don't know what I expect from people, a per- person, a monster like that. So... Um, I know we always try to separate the two because, again, he was a phenomenal football player. Mm-hmm. And you you have to be if that's something people still bring up, barring what came the rest of your life. And for me, you know, I again, when the trial was happening, I was like a toddler. Uh, that being said, and I remember this because I was on the morning show at the time when FX came out with the American crime story, The People versus O.J. Simpson. And there was a 30 for 30 on it as well made. O.J. Made in America, the title of that one. I remember watching those two. And really feeling like I was going through what everybody else did. I felt like it was really a good depiction of it all. And then you think about the pop culture phenomenon of the white Bronco chase. Like, that still comes up, that footage. The white Bronco is still, it's still, uh, like, accommodating. It's still something that's linked with OJ and the chase. Yeah, and again, that footage still pops up, like, Mm -hmm. randomly in different scenarios throughout the year, whether it's in the news or in sports or whatever else. Comedy, um, like people make fun of it. A hundred percent. And the actual vehicle was out of commission for what felt like, I think, 20 years or whatever it was. They've only recently come back out with the Bronco actually as a vehicle that you can get. Um, and then there's the phrasing, right, of if the glove fits, you must acquit. If the glove don't fit, or you must Or if the glove acquit, don't yeah. fit, yeah. So, like, that's something – I think I remember, too, like, being in school after the fact as I, again, was like a toddler when it actually happened. Like, this is something that was a part of American history that was – it wasn't taught as like a full chapter, but I remember hearing and seeing and, and being aware of it educationally growing up because of how big of an impact it had on our country. So, and I believe even to this day, he's the only bust that's been removed from the national football or the pro football, excuse me, Hall of Fame. Um, there was like a whole story there with that and like his bust in the hall and like how that whatever happened there. Mm-hmm. So a very uh, giant subject, right? Beyond sports beyond the trial, like there's just so many layers, so much to it um, that it it will never not be a part of our country's history for multiple reasons. But again, you know, for me, the the one thing that I have at the top of it all that that really holds truest is that the dude was a monster. Yeah, and I'll never forget being in fifth grade, Miss Russell's class, and we went to lunch and we all thought that he was going to be found guilty. And then we come back from lunch and she was like, he was acquitted. At that moment, everybody learned what acquitted meant. Uh, it was pretty wild. And that 94 year, yeah, uh, I remember the Knicks and the Rangers in the finals and the whole chase with the Bronco. It's wild. And, you know, Zach, we were talking about this before the show. Ha- has any Hall of Famer or any professional athlete had a farther fall from grace than O.J. Simpson? Right? I mean, you want to talk about the highest of the highest to the lowest of the lowest to at his age, at 76 years old. Like, just listen to what people are saying now that he's passed. Just watch on social media what people have to say. Like, there really isn't much sympathy. There really isn't much empathy right now for somebody who has lost their life. Like, it's it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild that we've seen a guy that's a Hall of Famer, Pro Football Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame, and and now it's like some people are you know are happy that he's gone. Is anybody like that? I mean, I think of a guy like Chris Benoit maybe in WWE, Aaron Hernandez, but. I mean, who else? Is there a bigger star than that, Zach? I don't think I can think of one. No, and that's the tough part is, like, who got to that level of stardom athletically, professional mm-hmm. sports-wise, and, and and fell as hard? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I think of other football players, like Aaron Hernandez, but he was never at the level OJ was at. No. So, and then you think of some other cases, whether it be, you know, Tiger Woods' you know, situation with some of the things he went through. Kobe Bryant, the but, late great. But they were able to come back, right? But they all yeah. came back from it. And, mm-hmm. and again, difference between what they were in trouble for mm-hmm. and murder. Like exactly. it's another tier above. Yes. So it's uh it, yeah, we're, it, and we're not com- we're not comparing the extent of their crimes or their discretions. It's just yeah. it's one of those things where as being as high as you are, you know, people looking at you, people loving OJ as a funny actor with Leslie Nielsen. I remember that like it was yesterday. And then what happened all with, the way yeah, down. later on. In I don't, the, in I don't the think mid-90s. anything, I don't think anything comes close to it. No. Not that I can think of at least. I'm with you. We'll keep this conversation going later on on the program. When we come back, Jason Light, Buccaneers general manager, 
He speaks before the draft in a couple of weeks live from the Avon Health Training Center at One Buccaneer Place. But first, let me tell you about my friends over at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. If you're looking for a place in downtown Tampa, listen, it's at the base of the Truist Building. You know where that is. They got the patio seating outside. It is beautiful. There's so many great things to do there. Scratch Kitchen, Craft Cocktails. They got the expanded wine menu, and they're located just a few blocks again from Amelie Arena right there on East Jackson Street. Top Shelf Sports Lounge is the place for you. They got grilled wings, Ebor egg rolls, fan favorites, and they've got healthy options too. Sushi grade ahi tuna, their tuna bowl, and the power play salad. Just an incredible atmosphere. Trust me, there isn't a bad seat in the house. Take a picture, take a video, tag me in it. Let me know how you feel about Top Shelf Sports Lounge. When the weather gets a little bit better later on today, head there before the lightning game or during the lightning game to check it out. Everybody keeps asking, where can I go to get a drink or a bite to eat in downtown Tampa? My first answer always, Top Shelf Sports Lounge. Lights, camera, action. WDAE is taking over YouTube with live video streams of The Drive with T-Crass, Pat and Aaron, and Jay and Zach. Search WDAE. Give us a like and hit subscribe for your daily dose of sports talk in living color. WDAE on YouTube. Like and subscribe. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE. Traffic update. Crash in Pinellas County, 70th Avenue Northeast bound, right around 67th Street. Still slow and go traffic now on 275. Also heavy congestion, 275 northbound before State Road 60 to after Ashley Drive. Also, I-4 westbound before the Selman Connector to 275, slow and go. And a crash in Tampa, Lineball Avenue westbound between Gun Highway and Nixon Road is still active. This is at Plantation Boulevard with partial road blockage. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Fresh from Florida. Hey, guys, Chef Justin with Fresh from Florida here, reminding you that Fresh from Florida sweet corn is in season now. And for amazing sweet corn recipes, visit FreshFromFlorida.com. Fresh from Florida. There's sunshine in every bite. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. Hey guys, T. Kraz here from my guys over at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. It's called regenerative medicine, guys. So if you're tired of those achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love doing, you got to call my guys over at QC Kinetics. I did. They fixed my elbow. They fixed my knee. They can do the same for you. No surgery, no steroids, no drugs. They are a thing of the past. Regenerative medicine is where it's at, and they can deliver lasting results. They can use your own body's biologics to restore and repair damaged joint tissue, and that's what QC Kinetics will do. So get your life back, guys. Call them. QC Kinetics. Get a free consultation. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you going again with no downtime. 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. QC Kinetics. Locations in Bradenton, Lakeland, St. Pete, and Brandon. Tell me, your boy T. Crash sent you. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com/free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. You wouldn't know it, but most financial advisors are put in a box. I'm Jeff Jr. from Trajan Wealth, and I want to provide you a little insight about financial advisors. Most financial advisors have to sell what their company requires them to sell. And many advisors have to only adhere to what's called a suitability standard. A suitability standard is a limited standard of care, not requiring what's sold to be best, just suitable. 
Advisors with this loose standard often have limited investment and product selection. Trajan Wealth is held to a fiduciary standard, which is the highest standard of care in the advisory business. And that's just one of the many reasons we have billions of dollars under our care and attract clients from other advisors. Raise your standards today and call Trajan Wealth. Call 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you've been injured in a car accident, call America's largest injury law firm. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients, to deliver more for you. If you or anyone in your family has been injured in a car accident, call us now, as the time to file a claim may be limited. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before, protecting America fighting for you. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Thursday, April 11th. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Thursday, April 11th, 813-219-1919. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge motor oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge, better oil for maximum performance. Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3 H test versus API SP test limits. Men suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? Frustrated taking pills that don't work? Here's a message from Prestige Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prestige Men's Medical Center now. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. The reigning, defending, and undisputed home of Tampa, Tampa Bay sports, sports talk, talk for over 20, 20 years. We are 95.3 FM W237CW Pinellas Park, 95.7 HD3 WBTP Clearwater, 96.7 FM W224BE Brent, and, and the, the mighty, mighty 620 WDAE St. Petersburg. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, hey, hey Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay. Free has never sounded so good. Welcome back, Jay and Zach. Let's get right to it. Head on over to the Advent Health Training Center at One Buccaneer Place. Here's Buccaneers General Manager Jason Light. Be able to have a lot of reactive athleticism because bullets are flying a lot quicker inside. You have people coming at you from different directions as opposed to just coming off the edge. So you have to be instinctive, smart, tough. You have to be able to bend. You have to be able to anchor. You have to have some you know, stoutness. You have to be able to play with your cleats in the ground. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Before you'd like to pick 32nd of the year, right? um, you're not quite there, but you've been down uh, in the order quite a few years. How, how much more difficult is that trying to project who's coming, whether you should move up? Um, and, and it is boring there for a little while, but I mean, just in general, is it more of a challenge to, to pick down? I would say that the biggest challenge, at least for me, is you're trying to target who might be there. and. We say this all the time, we say it to all the prospects that are coming in and visiting the top 30 that no one knows how this is gonna go. So if somebody's telling you, you know, they know where you're going, they're lying. Um, only one team right now knows who they're taking probably, and maybe they don't, but it's, so you, you try to 
you know, right now we have five to seven guys we think might be there. And then you start kind of falling in love with them, and they're like, okay, one of these guys is going to be there, and we're going to be so happy. But then there's the chance that none of them are. So I think that's the, the hardest part about picking down there late. Yeah. Kalijah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we were happy with that. Yeah. Is there such thing as an easier draft depending on the needs from year to year or so? The same is very harder or easier depending on what you need, what you don't need. It's the same. You you want to, we want to, you know, kick ass every year in the draft. Um, you know, there's some years you're going to depend on them a little bit more like we did last year. And we're going to depend on this class, too. We're, we're hoping to get some players that can come in and contribute and help us right away, like last year with Kalijah and Yaya and Cody and you know Trey. and um, So we're hoping for that. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I think every year the, the uh, patience from the fans and from everybody gets a little bit you – know, they want players to be, become all pro – you know, by their second game, and it used to be, you know, take two years. So, but we also want the players to be able to contribute. So right away. So, I, but I think every year you kind of approach it the same. You're hoping to get the right guys. Jason, you've had experience trading up into the first round, just one spot, you can trade, but also trading down, uh, trading a couple spots to get you today at twelve, and trading out of the first round and, and then the Logan Hall. Uh, what goes into whether you trade up or down? When do you kind of get a feel, or, or, or you, when do you have those powwows with your your people in the war room about when to go up and get a guy or when to trade down? Is that on the clock? Is that a couple picks ahead of time? Or walk us through some of those instances you've had. So in the past, our trade ups and trade downs, we've we've started that process typically around now and so we are too right now um and so you don't want to make rash decisions at least i don't on draft day um emotional decisions that can come back and bite you you want to be as clear-minded as you can when you're making when you're putting that together we've got a big chart um a certain number of players if you've got three players remaining and you're 10 picks out or, you know all those types of things and it depends on what players are available too, so they're still there. So um, we kind of have a pretty good feel going into the draft. Um, you know, I'd say around pick twenty, we'll we'll know if we want to start attempting to move up or or not. But I would say right now, I like the thought of the way I I really have a lot of trust in my staff um, and both coaching staff and scouting staff of how we've been operating that. Those picks seem pretty uh, important to me right now. So, what about projecting when there's going to be a run on players? How much of that can you do in advance, and how much of that are you doing like while you're trying to fly the airplane? Usually happens on the fly. Usually starts happening during the draft. You can't really predict. Like I said, you can't predict. You can kind of guess what teams are going to pick. We have a little bit better uh, success knowing what positions teams are going to go after, not necessarily the specific player um, after the first round. So. But you kind of have to do that on the fly. You, you start to realize it, you know, on the fly. After three receivers go, you know that it's probably going to start going if if everybody thinks that there are six high-caliber, high-end receivers, the next three are probably going to go pretty quick. Jason, what would you say is the biggest need overall? I know you want good players. There's a lot of needs. Is it defense? Is it edge? Is it, what do you think is the biggest need? Um, we have a lot, and that's okay. To have a lot of needs. Um, I think it's a good thing, actually. We had made it to, you know, came very close to going to the NFC Championship game last year, and we still signed our guys back, but we still have a lot of needs. I think that shows that we do this right pretty soon. Next couple years, we can be, or even this year, could be competing. So um, I always like the trenches, and I think we need help in both trenches. So... So this is year 11 for you. You've had 10 drafts now. You've learned a little bit from all of them. Um, I'm sure you're better and more confident in all aspects, but are, are there things you point to, whether it's the process or the approach, where you, you feel so much better about the way you do things compared to the first couple of drafts? Yeah. Um, so we've had a lot of stability here with my staff. I think more stability than any other team 
terms of people staying here, which is a great thing. Um, and so we all know each other very well. We've, I think we've done a great job. I've done a better job myself as well of um, going after the right kind of guy and avoiding the temptation to go after the talent and not necessarily the whole, the whole person. So, um, and I think we've done a great job. My staff has done a great job of identifying that with our, with our character grade. We put a lot of stock into that. So when we see players getting in trouble, you know, suspended, whatever, I'll look it up. Yep, we had a do not touch grade on. So um, it's a, uh, it's been they've been phenomenal in that regard. Bucks GM Jason Light speaking at One Buck Place. Yeah, we've we've had really good discussions there, and once again, it's like the same thing when we're at the combine talking about Baker and Mike and Levante. It's you know we're. We really want them here. We want them here long term. I think they want to be here long term. So we've had a good track record with getting things done. Um, so I'm, I feel pretty good about things getting done. <laughs> I would love a boat day. Yeah. Um, the receiver position, obviously you recited Mike, but he's in his 30s now. Chris is in the final year of his contract. I know you got Trey last year, Devin. But it, it, you know, in, in a league that is so focused on playmakers on the outside, you've got the quarterback, how important is it to just continue to try to, try to research? Them? Yeah, it's, it's another position that, you know, you can't have, you know, you can, you really can't have too many of those. Um, and I think Liam can find a way to use a lot of very good receivers and playmakers. Yeah, and, and we, we like, we really like Trey, and we, we like what Rock was showing before he got injured last year. And um, so, but um, yeah, it would be, it's like I said, it's another position that I would consider a need. And uh, you can't fill them all right now in the draft, but uh, we'd love to get one. On the other side of that, the cornerback, you addressed that heavily in, in free agency. Um, I, I know Zion McCollum has the potential to start, but I mean, where would you assess where you are? in that regard too because you know you need tremendous athletes to try and counter uh some of those great receivers that rick was just talking about 100 percent, 100 percent. there's a great corner that's sitting there and he's staring us in the face and it's uh he's clearly a better player than what we have at other positions um it'd be hard to resist jason a couple of years ago came returned it might have been an active block it's so many touchbacks but we didn't kick off uh, rules in place this year you always put an emphasis, especially on the three guys and special teams, trying to find the guys that can cover and all that. But is there a little bit more of an emphasis to maybe try to find somebody where maybe it's a wide receiver or a running back that, that you like, but also bring some more kick return ability because of the rules? Yeah, for sure. It's going to become kind of a more of an offensive play almost um, with the way that teams are going to scheme it. None of us really know exactly how it's going to look because we haven't done it yet but we haven't we have a thought of what it's going to be like we've had a lot of discussions about it so it's going to put a premium on that type of returner whether it's going to be a punt returner or a kick returner or like i said it's going to be kind of an offensive play um so those special teams special plays special players shout out to sketch it's uh that's those are the uh, we're going to put an emphasis on that and in a quarterback driven league, obviously come from New England, you know, the, you know with Brady, Bill would always draft quarterbacks. Um, you've got Kyle Trask, Wolford, obviously we signed Baker, but is that a position that you look at every year? Is that a position that you look at this year? Is there a certain, because you have a full room, is there a certain cutoff, maybe round that you say that, you know, we're not going to take one, one or two, but we'll look for three to seven or something like that? How does that kind of work out in your draft process? Well, in this particular year, we look at all the quarterbacks. We spend a lot of time looking at the quarterbacks. Um, you, I'll never say that we wouldn't take a quarterback because you can take one and be glad that you did at some point. Now, we like our room right now, but uh, we'll take a look at all of them where we already have. And it just, it's a little bit top heavy this year. Um, so, but, you know, there's always that instance we like somebody. Like I said, we think he's better than the other positions on the board that we would consider. When you talk about the characteristics of these guys as people, I guess just what qualities do you look for in them? Leaders, but leaders that can come in a lot of different shapes and forms. doesn't have to be an alpha leader. Um, you want guys that are passionate about the game. 
um, guys, well, guys that are resilient and that can deal with adversity. And um, we have a lot of those guys. Any draft day superstitions or routines that you follow year after year? <laughs> it's funny. I get a lot of, like on draft day, like on Thursday, we typically don't get in here until, I mean, the whole staff doesn't get in here until later because it's a late night. And I've had people ask, what are you doing? Are you on the phone? And I was like, no, I'm blowing leaves off of my pool deck and walking the dog. You know, it's like kind of the haze in the barn per se. So you kind of want to relax a little bit before you come in here and start the day. But uh, I would say, you know, um, I like to go for a long walk. And I was kind of clear my head that day a little bit longer than normal. With technology now. Sometimes with the dog. <laughs> with technology really stemming from the COVID time, 2020 and all that, we had a really good draft, by the way. Um, but how much did the Zoom calls play a role in this? Uh, I know you have up to 30 players in for top 30 visits, but are there some players that because of schedule conflicts that you would want to have in for a top 30 that you, you still can reach out to them via Zoom because of that? It, yeah, a thousand percent. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a big resource for us and it has for other teams too it's it's always good to see somebody face to face and talk to them and i mean it's always the the more um you know best way i think but zoom is we i can walk through the halls right now any day here during this process and our coaches are zooming with you know a different player or our scouts are or together usually and we just get a lot more um information gather a lot more information and get a good feel for the players. Is that something that really you find beneficial, not just for guys that you're going to draft, but also making some of those connections and kind of doing a little pre-draft recruiting for undrafted free agents? Yep, for sure. We try to do as much of that as we can. And then uh, and then the draft is over and it becomes a free-for-all and it's like a, you're, you're on the you know New York exchange. So, But it's I think it does help a little bit to form relationships because everybody likes to have a little bit of a relationship and feels better going somewhere when they when they've talked to people there. Bucks GM Jason Light speaking right now at One Buck Place. And there were some unusual circumstances to that, but um, your team got a lot younger as a result. Did, did it complicate the draft process when the guys that you're upgrading are, are themselves 22 or 23 and have had a year in this system with these coaches like you have in many positions now? I, I don't think so. I, I know where you're coming from there, but I don't, I don't really think so. I think we all, when we all recognize somebody that it's, we think is clearly better than what we have. Uh, you know, one thing I, one of the things I love about Todd and his staff is they're not afraid to coach up a rookie and and put him out there. And I think we saw that last year. So it's it's very very comforting as a GM to know that your coach, and your coaching staff, um, love to, the challenge of getting rookies ready to go. Do you ever look at any mock drafts? Do you guys kind of when you have downtime? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. And you just kind of want to see where, you know, in general, where guys may be. Somebody's talking to somebody that's putting the mock draft together. So you like to think there's something there, but um, you never rely on it. Does it bother you when you see the same name attached to your team over and over again in some mock drafts? Sometimes. But when it's, not, when it's the guy that we're not, um, targeting, I, I love to see it. <laughs> yeah. It is the guy that you're targeting, though. Yeah. We'll do what we can to make sure that name's not on there again, you know? Jason, when you bring guys in for visits, for example, recently the Michigan cornerback you brought in, I can't pronounce his name, and he said Mikey. you treat them like family. What, is that, what does that visit entail? I mean, what, give us an idea of when to, what an official visit is. Well, they'll come in and they'll meet with the trainer. Um, they've done their physicals for the most part. Sometimes there's a few things that we want to check up on a little bit, but they'll meet with our tr they'll meet with Bobby and the training staff uh, for 30 minutes. Then they'll meet with Duke and his staff for 30 minutes. Um, then they'll meet with myself and John Spitek and Mike Beal and Rob McCartney, um, and then our scouts in a separate session for 30 minutes. And then they'll meet with the coaches for a little bit longer and have lunch and. You know, we all want them to make them feel comfortable. We want to get them loose, and we want to see their true, uh, uh, their true colors, their true personality. So, you know, everybody's got different ways of. You know, sometimes Duke will uh, give them um, um, 
some kind of a, a riddle to solve or some kind of, you know, we'll play some kind of a game with them or something just to see how competitive they are. But I, I think overall, they always leave here uh, having a good day. So um, we just got, like I said, we want to loosen them up and see what their true personality is. And then you circle around more? with everybody and get their opinions on what transfer. Yeah, we have a very large spreadsheet with everybody's opinion of what, what everybody is, including the uh, interns that drive them to the airport and back. So those sometimes those are the best ones. So you look at a position like running back, you invested a third round pick in Rashad White a couple of years ago, and he's been a starter over 1,500 yards, and he looks to have a poised you know, season next, next year as well. How do you kind of balance like drafting another running back in the third round or a high, using a high pick on that, on that position when you have a starter in place and you're really looking for more of a guy who can kind of be a change of pace or short yardage? Um, you balance like, okay, we like this guy, but he might go earlier than we might want to spend at this position? Um, well, I will just say this, that I think if if we feel that we need to upgrade the the room or the running game, um, not necessarily maybe the player, but just the running game, we can't be afraid to take another player. I, I think if we had two Rashads, we'd find a way to use two Rashads. So, but I understand what you mean. You kind of want one to balance the other. Um, you, you still want, you want good football players and you can't be afraid to tell your player, hey, we're, you're great, but if you have another you, you know, we can spell you, and we got to also have insurance. There's always injuries that come into account. So I think one thing we learned, at least I learned, the 2020, 2021 seasons, that we had a lot of great depth, and um, we had a lot of players that could step into um, at places when we had injuries, and um, so you can't have enough good depth. It's production versus potential, especially when it's those higher picks. Like I feel like it's a little easier to do that later on because everybody's going to have some kind of a hole, which is why they're they're typically selected later on. But in those, you know, the first two rounds, um, you know, how do you kind of balance with okay, this guy maybe didn't have as much sack production in college, but we think it's because maybe he was, you know, he hadn't quite learned some of these pass rush techniques. He just we just need to get our hands on him as a coaching staff. Like how do you balance that when it's these high picks? Well, well, I think with all players, we we don't necessarily. I mean, you you look at the stats, you know, they're they're good to look at, but there's you look at just the raw skill and the potential, and they're all raw at this point. There's very few that are just the you know the complete product. So I think you just have to look at the potential for all of them, um, and we we have ways of grading other than production. It's top heavy, and we certainly expect a bunch of those guys to go early. Just in general, like how how good are these quarterbacks that'll be maybe in the top five, top ten? Um, you've done drafts a long time. Um, well, it's an interesting question because I mean, right now I would tell you that our goal is to get you better. All right. Well, there you go, Jason Light um, from uh, one. He's back. Oh, he's really back. Like ahead. Then you go back. 10 years and said the same thing about another class and only one of them worked out and so it's there's just so many it's what makes it kind of fun uh at the same time it's challenging is there's so many factors that go into it the the city that they go to the coaching staff the the players around them the um you know just all the what's going on with that player's life at the time and um you know do they play right away do they sit you know it's there's so many factors that go into whether a quarterback succeeds. I mean, we saw it, Baker have a great year early in his career and then then come here and revive himself. So it's uh, it's an interesting, uh, I don't think, if anybody can ever nail it and figure it out, then they're going to be a wealthy person. Jason, how do you balance Last one. the future versus the now? Uh, an instance, Levante David, that linebacker room, right? Uh, Devin leaves in free agency. You really like what you have in KJ Britt, Servasi, Dennis, even JJ Russell who stepped in and played admirably. But Levante is on a year-to-year contract now. Um, and you could always certainly, as you mentioned, upgrade any position. So how do you kind of balance, like, well, we could use a guy here. We like the guys we have here. Linebacker, inside linebacker is typically a slower developmental position. Um, but we also need to start planning for life after Levante, which is hard to hear for everybody. But how do you kind of go about that when well, you're taking these lessons? Yeah, you just, you can't. There's a, probably a few positions like that. But uh, you can't fill them all. You know, you can't fill all the needs with the draft. You know, we only have so many picks. And, you know, you have post-draft, you have 
trades. You have you know, we'll be adding players in August, September, you know, throughout the year. But um, last year we took Voss, and we really like Voss, and we think Voss is gonna has a really bright future. So we kind of hopefully took some steps to hopefully take care of that in the future. But I'm hoping Levante plays another seven years. To be honest yeah. with you, so. Should you watch Draft Day, the movie? <laughs> I've seen a lot, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, good stuff there from Jason Lights, uh, Buccaneers general manager. We will reflect on what we heard. What was your biggest takeaway from his comments? We're there at the Evan Hill Training Center at One Buccaneer Place, 82945 on the Bartro 4 D E text line, 888-546-4620. Zach Blobner and Jay Retch are here with you. We will... Discuss when we return, but first, let me tell you about my friends over at the Rhino. Today's a big day outside. If you're here in the Tampa Bay area, man, that weather is ugly. I really hope that your gutters are on point. Go check them out. Save time and money with the Rhino. They have the world's only fully enclosed gutter system. I was just checking out my friend Kim Kuzmano's gutters when I was over there for WrestleMania Saturday last weekend. Those things are awesome. And she knows I just spoke to her in the hallway. She's not worried about her gutters. She's not worried about clogging. She's not worried about any kind of hassle when there's inclement weather like we have today here in the Tampa Bay area because she is dealing with my friends over at the Rhino. The Rhino gutter gutter experts hit a solution that'll be a home run for your budget. And if you act now, you can get a $300 service discount. Plus, they offer military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to the Rhino.com schedule services today. The Rhino.com. They're here to bat for you. The Pat and Aaron Show. The show of the people. Raw and unapologetic. To me, the most valuable player is you take that guy off that team, what do they become? And if you take Nikita Kucherov off this team, they're not making the playoffs as far as I'm concerned. He is still just that much more impactful. To me, it's been obvious all season long. Feed your need for bolts. The Pat and Aaron Show. Morning starting at 6 on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeart Radio app. WDAE. Traffic update. A lot of congestion all over the Bay Area right now. We have 275 southbound from Fowler Avenue to after floor Brassica Avenue. Also a disabled vehicle blocking the right lane and shoulder on 275 southbound right around I-4. And needing a crash at Main Street east of Keene Road at Achieva Way and US-19 northbound south of Tarpon Avenue at Boyer Street. Also a crash US-19 just north of Alderman Road. I'm Pat Largo, News Radio WFLA. This report is sponsored by Cracker Barrel. It pays to be early because at Cracker Barrel, you can get early dinner deals weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. That includes their signature meatloaf, home-style chicken, and more, starting at just $8.99. So make tonight an early dinner night. Trade-a-thon is always one of Brandon Ford's most popular sales events. So Trade-a-thon 2024 is going going to be be unbelievable. unbelievable. Going to be unbelievable. You want to get rid of all those toys you don't want anymore? Cars, trucks, boats, campers, motorcycles. We don't care if you have to tow it in or push it that last mile. But you don't need to trade anything to get our Trade-a-thon deals. You don't need to trade anything to get our Trade-a-thon deals. Like gorgeous new 2024 F-150 Crew Cab STXs with the black appearance package, huge 12-inch touchscreen, and premium 20-inch wheels and a custom spray and bed liner for just $44,900. For just $44,900. We have 100 of these trucks. Or get 1.9% for 72 months on new 2023 F-150s. Please note, during the sale, every customer qualifies for the branded Ford price. And no other Ford dealer in this part of the country can beat that price. No hidden fees during trade 2024 at Brandon Ford, the largest volume Ford truck dealer in America. Highway 60 and 301 in Tampa and at BrandonFord.com. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak to Day, Thursday, April 11th. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only for those who call in the next two minutes. 
minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Thursday, April 11th, 813-219-1919. It's time to sign your kids up for summer camp at the YMCA for friends, fun, and adventure. At YMCA Summer Camp, I made a lot of friends. I had a ton of fun. And the adventures, the adventures are the best part. At YMCA Summer Camp, there's a ton of activities like soccer, swimming, basketball, arts and crafts, gymnastics, and so much more. Find your friends' fun adventure at YMCA Summer Camp. Register online at tampayMCA.org. Let's camp. I'm Ellie Anajar of Anajar and Levine. Injured in a car crash? Never rush to settle with insurance companies and never settle for just any attorney. Demand Anajar and Levine. Our experienced legal team will fight to win you the maximum compensation you deserve. Call me, Ellie Anajar, for a free consultation and take back control of your life. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Main office, Tampa. RiseCon 2024 is back and better than ever. Global entrepreneur and Tampa's very own Vic Tipness brings together the world's most elite event for entrepreneurs to Tampa to help people live their max life. On April 19th through the 21st, join Vic along with MLB All-Star Alex Rodriguez, NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, political analyst Tucker Carlson, and many more. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com. Invest in yourself and watch your life transform. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com today. You do not want to miss this event. Why settle for plain old vinyl? When the Fibrix window from Renewal by Anderson is twice as tough, it's also Energy Star's 2023 most energy efficient window. Right now, save $300 on every window and save $825 on all patio doors, plus zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for 12 months. Restrictions apply. Minimum purchase of three units required for discount. Renewal by Anderson. A better way to a better window. Visit rbafla.com. License number CGC 1527613. The Bush Gardens Tampa Bay Food and Wine Festival is back every weekend and now through May 19th with over 75 different culinary delights to sip and savor. Plus free concerts like Hoobastank this weekend. Save on tickets, fun cards, and annual passes at bushgardenstampa.com. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. For over 35 years, we've grown by offering our clients more, more offices, more lawyers, and recovering more than $20 billion. Injured? The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Dealing with your gutters is a swing and a miss. Let the Rhino Gutter Experts pinch hit for you. Schedule now and you can get a $300 discount on services. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to the Rhino.com and schedule services today. The Rhino, hitting home runs all day. For more information about contests on this station, go to 953WDAE.com slash rules. It's the VC Show. What's up? I'm Vince Carter, and my podcast, The VC Show, is coming back. Season two of The VC Show is going to be bigger and better than ever. Every week during the NBA season, I'll give you my real insights and opinions on the league. Vince Savage reigns supreme. Subscribe to the pod and listen to the VC Show with me, Vince Carter, on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. It's the VC Show. Stuck in traffic? Signal cutting out? Get online. Download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Welcome back into Jay and Zach. Zach Blobner, Jay Retcher here on a Thursday in Tampa Bay. Not a sunny one. Be safe out there, folks. Even as the weather gets a little bit calmer, you still got the roads wet and people driving wild. Uh, But we're going to talk a little bit about Jason Light here in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I thought there was a ton to pull from what we just heard from the Buccaneers general manager, Jay. And I want to start and focus on the first round and some things that I kind of pulled. Right, yeah. It feels like he is very much on board with what we've been saying the entire time, which is to go in the trenches and draft in the trenches. But he did mention mm -hmm. that cornerback, if there was a good enough cornerback that he thought would be an upgrade 
at the position compared to the players they already have, a.k.a. Zion McCollum, that they wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger potentially on a CB in round one. And we've seen a lot of mocks that are sending a cornerback to the Buccaneers. And a Shrake Straw or a guy like Hule McKinstry, Cooper DeJean from the Iowa. Um, There's a handful of guys. Yeah, so that didn't really sound like a ringing endorsement for Zion McCollum as a CB1-2 across from uh, Jamel Dean. Is that what you got, too? So I th- I think I think it's either going to be <laughs> an edge rusher, an offensive lineman, or a cornerback. Like, I think we can narrow it down for the first-round pick for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 26. But that's assuming that they stay there. I mean, obviously, if they move up, maybe there's a guy that they like, and I think they're still in that position. If they trade back, all bets are off because mm-hmm. then I think they're going value. Yeah. Although I still think those are the positions. I find I, it's tough because I, I just don't think – I guess the question we have to ask based on that comment is how many cornerbacks in round one are upgrades over Zion McCollum? Probably the majority of them. If that's true, Mm -hmm. then it feels like they're going to draft a cornerback with that pick. Yeah. Based on what he said. But doesn't mean that, listen, I hate to say it, but it doesn't mean that uh, if they get a corner in round two, it's that he's not better than Zion either. I I, I feel like it's one of those things where I don't know if they're a hundred percent sure if he's going to be that guy. Mm Mm-hmm. Zion, as far as being the starter, but I, I feel like if they drafted another solid guy that is their type of corner, big guy, tackle in space, yeah. you know, they're not going to draft a 5'9 guy. That's just not what they do. Yeah, And they add him to the rotation. I don't think Jason would be opposed to that either, right? I, I like that from what I got from Jason, it seems like he's got a lot of options. He's looking at a lot of different things. He's not closing the door on anything. And I know a lot of it could be, you know, coach speak, GM speak. Yeah. But you heard, and I think this was in the beginning before we, we got on air, uh, before we had Jason Light's press conference on air, because it started before we came back from break. But Greg Allman just put out a video, and, and Jason Light said, and we'll have these clips for you in the 2 o'clock hour, Jason said he's glad to have Randy Gregory on board, but that doesn't necessarily change their desire for another edge rusher from the draft. And there was a lot of people out there that thought, oh, they got Randy Gregory. That means they're not going to go pass rusher in, in round one. I didn't think there was any. We weren't, we weren't those people. We weren't those people. No. I didn't think there was any correlation with that whatsoever. Not at all. I, I don't think that has anything to do with it. He's brought in here as a rotational guy. He's a guy that, yeah, he may start. He may, right? Yeah. But I don't think that's the goal. I think you you want another pass rusher in there to be able to push Yaya Diaby, to be able to work with Randy Gregory, because that is a position you need numbers you can't just stick with the same guys over and over, but you have the depth there already. You already have Anthony Nelson as a depth guy. You have JTS as a depth guy. You have Randy Gregory as a depth guy. I feel like I'm leaning more and more if like Verse or Latu are there or they're close. You heard him say, at 20, that's when you start realizing, all right, where are we at? Are we going to trade up? Or are we going to trade back? Zach, if at 20, Verse and Latu are still there, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks traded up to get either one of those guys. Because that is a position where those guys can make a contribution right off the rip. Are they going to get 19 sacks in year one? Maybe not. But if you're telling me you're going to bring that guy in and he gets eight and a half or nine and Yaya goes for 10 or 11 and then Gregory pitches in with five, you get your your normal four or five for Anthony Nelson. They usually all come in the fourth quarter of a big game. Now your pass rush is looking a lot better. So I wouldn't be opposed, nor do I think they're shutting the door at all on a pass rusher at 26. I, I agree, and I think even though we just had the chat about corner, I still feel as strongly as I did earlier in the week that if the Bucks take a corner, it's because the edge rusher that or the offensive lineman they would have liked at 26 that they have higher on the big board are already off. So I think that for me, even though I, I, I do believe they're going to draft a cornerback, and I do think that that's a guy that they're circling in the first few rounds, positionally speaking— the only way that the Bucks don't draft in the trenches at 26 is if by some crazy big board thing, all those guys are gone. Mm-hmm. So whether it's the Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, the dude out of Duke, whether it's one of those edge rushers you just mentioned. Let's say both of the edge rushers are gone. Yep. And one of the two guys are gone, either Barton or Powers Johnson, mm-hmm. right? And they love Kool-Aid McKinstry, yeah. right? Like, let's say that's guy that they think he could be the best guy in the draft. Mm-hmm. Alabama... <laughs> I just feel like Kool-Aid McKinstry is definitely going to the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know why that is. Just the Alabama connection there. Um, but let's say he's there. The pass rushers have gone and see either Kool-Aid McKinstry or Chop Robinson. He, you know, based on 
what they've done in the past. Like they're going to go with the guy that they feel is the best fit for their defense. Right. So, but I agree with you. I think it's well, but that's the scenario hard to where those guys are off the board. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But but there could be one of those guys still there. Right. It yeah. depends on where they have him drafted. So mm-hmm. they may have cool uh, a guy like and this is all hypothetical, obviously, but they could have a guy like Kool Aid higher than Jared Verse, but not Latu. Right? Yeah. So we may th- we may think that that's kind of a little crazy, but if that's what they believe, uh, they've earned the right because that defense, man, I'm telling you, they I thought they were decent last year. I think they're only going to get better next year. And you get some pass rushers, watch out. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, but, again, I think it really solidified a lot of the things we already thought when it came to the first round. Jason Light speaking earlier today. A couple other notes he mentioned, uh, talking about he wishes he had two Rashad Whites. Like you and I already said, they're going to add another running back yeah. through the draft. You can book that. I don't know when it'll be. I would assume no earlier than round three, but keep an eye on it. And then, look, they do have to add some depth at in uh, inside linebacker. Uh, mm-hmm. Jason wishes Levante would play for another seven years. We all do. That's not realistic. But he sounded high on Cervasi Dennis, which I thought was a big takeaway as well. So um, I, I thought going in, remember, when we went back and we we spoke about Cervasi Dennis and, and – uh, and uh, Kalaj, you can't see. I mean, their college coach was saying those are the two smartest players that he ever coached. So for a guy like Sarasia Dennis, okay, let's see who can rise their game, who can take their game to the next level. Because you and I have, I've told you this before. One of the hardest things to really quantify from year to year is not who's there and who's not there, but how much better, especially your young players get from year one to year two and year two to year three. Is he going to just be a special teams guy? Because look at Zion's a great example. Mm-hmm. Man, he was terrible that first year as a secondary player. But special teams, he was good. He took a big leap in year two. What does that leap look like from year two to year three? You're not worried about leaps when it comes to Mike Evans and Levante David and Chris Godwin. Like, you know what those guys are about. Even Rashad White. Like, you don't really, you're not worried about leaps for those guys. But what about Yaya Diaby? Is he going to be stepping up into a guy that's a 10-sack kind of guy? Is Servasier Dennis going to say, are you going to look at Servasier Dennis this year and go, Devin White who? That's a big, big question mark going into the season, but that's what part of you know. It's part of what makes football great, man, to see the maturation of these young players and who can step right in uh, for the incumbents and just make a seamless transition. Yeah, and, and again, that's part of what the draft is, is filling holes. Fortunately, the Bucks don't necessarily have any quote-unquote holes they just have areas where they can get better. And that's the position you want to be in more than anything heading into a draft is where you're not handcuffed to you have to do this, you have to do that. You you know, you know don't have to draft a quarterback and, and pray that that's the franchise's answer. Like That's the number one thing you don't want to have to do at the draft. And again, Jason Light, credit to him because as it currently sits with the roster, whether it's the addition of Randy Gregory, whether it's all the corners that they added, um, they're in a spot where they're going to be looking to get better, not to just compete uh on the flip side of that you know who knows still what will happen that's one of the beauties of the draft he also quickly on that he mentioned the fact that Anton Winfield Jr. Tristan Wars two guys he feels really good about where they're at in their yeah. contract talks I uh, would expect at least a Winfield Jr. news to come definitely before June it'll be interesting to see if it's before the draft you're listening to Jay and Zach home of the best bucks coverage here on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620 kicking it John Dugas on the other side, a chance to win a four pack of Rowdy's tickets. Pay attention because the answer to the, those tickets is in the questions. We'll be right back. But first, I got to tell you about my friends at the Rhino, especially on a day like this where it was raining freaking sideways here in the sideways. Tampa Bay area. Listen, if you're having issues right now with your gutter system, you should have called the Rhino. The Rhino.com. These are my guys right here. They have a full inspection system. They're the world's only fully enclosed gutter system, which provides ultimate protection. You don't want to deal with something like that on a day like today when it is absolutely ugly out. So tomorrow, have them come out. It's a $300 service discount. If you go right now to the rhino.com, they've got military discounts, senior discounts. One of our coworkers here, Kim Kuzmano, she swears by him. And when I was over there last Saturday, I checked him out and I said, that is the number one gutter system around. So don't wait, go to the rhino.com, schedule your services today. Tell them that Jay Retro sent you the rhino.com. They're here to bat for you. Raise up. Sports. You love it. We love it. My kids love it. Even Weird Steve in sales loves it. You know, Weird Steve, the dude who always has that big glob of spit in the corner of his mouth. Ew. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620.
I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. The 2024 Masters Tournament set to begin today. Augusta National, a beautiful yet challenging course. The extra difficulty makes a win at the Masters one of the more difficult achievements in all of golf. That brings the tournament a substantial amount of coverage every year. But this year's tournament will attract even more attention. Earlier last week, it was reported Tiger Woods had been on the grounds practicing for the tournament. He had been training hard in order to compete in this four-day golf challenge. The 15-time major had hasn't played much since he re-injured his leg. But Tiger's return won't be just for show. If you've followed his career at all in the last 25 years, you know he's in it to win it. Wood still appears far from full strength, and he may never be back to his former self. But Tiger's won majors when he's been injured before, and this injury, prolonged absence, won't make him a favorite. But when you consider the history of this place and Tiger Woods, it's hard to say he doesn't have a chance. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. The less your business spends, the more margin you keep. But everything else costs more. Smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system that brings accounting, financial management, inventory, HR onto one platform. It reduces IT costs, and over 37,000 companies have already made the move. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering one-of-a-kind flexible financial programs. Head to netsuite.com slash Patrick. You know our trusted partner, TireRack.com, for their fast, free shipping, free road hazard protection, convenient installation options, and their great selection of the best tires, like the highly consumer-rated Continental Extreme Contact DWS 06 Plus. But did you know they sell other automotive products? Wheels, brakes, and suspension, just to name a few. Everything you need to elevate your drive. You can go to TireRack.com slash Dan. TireRack.com, the way t Men. Are you suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? The medical providers at Prestige Men's Medical Center offer breakthrough treatments that eliminate problems in the bedroom without pain or surgery. 98% of men see instant results on their first office visit. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Men are even lasting 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. But that's not all. For a limited time only, call Prestige Men's Medical Center now and your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. You'll see instant results right in the office. You'll even get a gift that enhances your performance in the bedroom. All this worth hundreds of dollars is free if you call now. 813-538-7931. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advice advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized inflation adjusted and tax advantage retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench. So call the Hollands at 727-469-7939 or visit asktheholands.com. Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. Matthew. Huh? Oh, sorry. It's okay. I just need you to listen to me. I know that a lot of times, Mom, it might not seem like I'm listening to you, but I am. I hear you. And what you say really does matter to me. I mean, let's be honest. No kid likes rules, but I get why we have them. I hear you, and I know it's because you care. For tips to start the talk, turn to Central Florida Behavioral Health Network at cfbhn.org. Central Florida Behavioral Health Network is a managing entity contracted with the Department of Children and Families. Hi, Andrew Duncan of the Duncan Duo team with LPT Realty. Are you looking to sell a high-end home? The official real estate agents of the Tampa Bay Lightning offer exclusive video technology to get your luxury home listing in front of qualified buyers all over the world. Visit us at duncanduo.com. 
Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors. Visit TrajanWealth.com. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports. Over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Check it! All right, it's time for Kicking It with our guy, John Dugas. He's going to give us a statement, and we'll either keep it, agree, kick it, disagree. You better be paying attention because uh, we will ask a question in the 2 o'clock hour, and you can win a four-pack of tickets to go see our Tampa Bay Rowdies uh, in a couple weeks against El Paso Locomotive. That's a week from this Saturday. They're in action tonight down in Miami, so good luck to our Rowdies. Go ahead, Dugas. Take it away. First topic we have... USF will remain competitive despite losing Chris Youngblood, Selton Miguel, and Kaysen Pryor. I'm going to keep it with so many people in the transfer portal, including many athletes in the American that are in the transfer portal as well. I think Amir Abdurrahim will find a way and they'll be back towards the top of the standings in the American. I'll keep it. I'm going to kick it just because until we know who those replacements are, it's hard to believe that they're going to upgrade from Chris Youngblood in terms of leadership, Case and Pryor in terms of effectiveness, and Selton Miguel was the sixth man of the year in the conference. So you're trying to replace like some pretty high-tier guys in terms of what they accomplished. I think that Amir Abdurrahim can replace them, but until I see who those guys are, it's hard for me to kind of make that assumption. Carter Knox. <clears throat> yeah, that would do it. I would keep it. Carter. That, <laughs> that would do that it. I would keep Carter. it. All right, next up. The NHL should move the Coyotes out of Arizona to Salt Lake City. I know I'm, I'm going to keep it, man. It's It sucks. I hate relocation. I hate what it means to the surrounding cities. But listen, it's just been an absolute chore. If Gary Bettman didn't appreciate the market as much as he did, then they would have been gone long ago. But he was just, he kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. And it's just the lack of interest there. It's just it's dissipated. And I know Austin Matthews is from there. And. There is a, you know, they do love their sports there in Arizona, but hockey, it just hasn't caught on. They're playing in a freaking college rink this year. Uh, Salt Lake City was something that was discussed during the All-Star Weekend in Toronto, so I I just want support. I hate when teams don't get support. I hate when they play in buildings that aren't packed, uh, so I'll keep it. Yeah, I'm going to keep it, too. I I like the ownership group there in Utah. It seems like a good one. Same guy that owns the Jazz, I believe, in terms of, like, who would be in charge of them. I saw that Houston was kind of having the same chat about maybe getting a hockey team, not yeah. them. I, I don't know if I feel as good about the Rockets owner. I think it'd be yeah. a, a cool fit, though, uh, in Utah. And in, right. listen, I just visited Salt Lake City last football season for the Gator game. Yeah, I saw you. I heard your pictures up there. They said never again. Yeah. The results uh, for me weren't great in terms of the actual game, but I thought it was a beautiful area. I think it's a great sports area. The aesthetics mm-hmm. are fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to keep it. I'm on board with that. Good stuff. Next up, Chicago Bulls head coach Billy Donovan will be the next coach at Kentucky. I know you want this one, Jay, so I'll give it to you first. I was going to kick it because I thought Scott Drew was going to be that guy, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it because it just makes too much sense. You're not going to go with just some rando. You're not going to go with some guy that you've never heard of before. It's time, Billy. It's time. Time for you to go home to Kentucky. Look at Billy. He's aged so much since he's been in Chicago. Home? That Bulls team is terrible. That Bulls team is not going to be competitive at all in the Eastern Conference. You went out and got DeRozan and Ball and Levine, three guys that play similar positions. Vukovic, I mean, they're decent. They're not better than the Bucks. They're not better than the Sixers, the Celtics, the Heat, the Knicks. They're the best, seventh or eighth best team in the Eastern Conference. Go back. You did your thing at Florida. You'll always be remembered there. Uh, but go to Kentucky, man. That's a dream job. Coach Cal. I think he's the one of the few guys that can go in there and not worry about having to fill Coach Cal's shoes. I'd like to see Billy D back in college basketball. I think it'd be good for the sport. Uh, I take exception to you saying go home to Kentucky. Go His home. home 
is in Gainesville, where his name is on the court. It's true. I'd be naive to not believe that, you know, it makes sense for the Wildcats to at least make a call to one Billy D. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't kick this harder. I couldn't get a, a, a bigger boot to do it with. And it's not just because of my UF bias. Um, again, I, I'm not naive enough to believe that they wouldn't at least give him a call. It's just hard for me to believe that Billy Donovan, who they had sought and wanted even before he left for the NBA, that was a guy who they would have loved to have in Lexington. I think he really wants to get it done in the NBA. I think he accomplished everything you can. He had back-to-back titles. He did more at Florida than Cal did in Lexington. So, yeah, I think if he wanted to come back to college, obviously that's a premier job. I just don't think that that's where he's at as it currently sits, even with the issues happening in Chicago on the Bulls side of things right now. Um, so I kick it. I knew Zach wasn't going to like that go home thing. I had that written down. It's like, I'm <laughs> wait, when I talk about this, I'm going to put go home on there. First coaching job is an assistant at Kentucky under Rick Patino. He's a Long Island guy, so if you want to get he technical. He's a Long Island guy. He's coming home with me, baby. Yeah. Well, he, in, St. In, uh, Agnes. in his college ball, obviously, not Providence, played. too. A lot of Long Island guys actually play at Providence yeah. as well. And Rockville Center is as close as you can get to Queens as you get before leaving Long Island, even though you don't leave Long Island. But Rockville Center is like exit 18 or whatever. We know, just real quick on Lexington. So you said Drew, he took his name out of the running. Nate Oates pulled his name earlier. Jay Wright pulled his name earlier. So at least in terms of the list that we talked about on the front end, Billy D hasn't said no yet. That's what I'm saying. Yet. Bill, Chicago's a tough place, man. They're very unforgiving there uh, as oh, far as like really their basketball. they're really forgiving in Kentucky. Bas- yeah, but I'm just saying with the basketball team. <laughs> yeah. It's, N- NBA is a different a different animal altogether. And just it hasn't worked out for them, whether it's OKC or Chicago. It just hasn't had the same kind of success. All right, good stuff. Next up, Jackson Holiday will have a better career than his dad, Matt. Wow, I that's think, a loaded question because I, I love Matt Holiday. He was a beast. I, I'm going to kick it for now. It's so hard. And I know he's got the projections. He's definitely a big enough prospect. And he oh. honestly had it. You know, he was under his dad coming up, which helps. We talk about the legacy of guys. He's under his dad when he was born, too. There, there you go. Hey-oh. Hey-oh. I just, it's hard for me to project something like that oh, after one God. game. I mean, how many prospects have we seen come up and not kind of fulfill oh. those shoes? So... Uh, for now, I will kick it. The smart guy inside me would say kick it because you look at Matt Holiday's resume. 2,000 hits, 316 home runs, a batting average of 299, seven-time All-Star. 2007, what a year. I mean, they lost in the in the, uh, in the World Series. I believe that was the year they got swept by Boston, but he was the MVP, the batting champion, and the RBI leader. That What an insane year. But I'm going to keep it. I, I think there's something special about this kid. Um, there's just, I, I think it's one of those things where, hey, Bobby Bonds was a pretty good player. King Griffey Sr. was a pretty good player. I don't know if they were as good as Matt Holiday, but there's something special about Jackson Holiday. And he's starting young. He reminds me of a lot of like a guy like Antoine Winfield Jr., where he, he just, he learned the right way and he's only going to get better. He's quicker than a hiccup, fantastic uh, defensively. I think he could bat 320 in the big leagues and hit 17. He's going to have some insane stat lines. I, He's going to hit for the cycle in the next year or two. Mark my words. We're going to say, Jackson Holiday hit for the cycle? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he did it multiple times. Either this year or next year, he'll hit for the cycle. I'm going to keep it. Love it. Great stuff, fellas. That's going to wrap up kicking it. Great job out of you, John Dugas. All right, when we come back, some highlights from the Jason Light interview, and also uh, we'll discuss a little bit more about the O.J. Simpson uh, passing 76 years young and a Masters update as well. How about that shirt, baby? How about that shirt? We'll discuss Ricky Fowler's attire and a whole lot more. When we return, it's Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM620. So, you want the latest on the Rays from the inside pitch to the final out? Hey, fellow, we're on it. Highlights and interviews? We got them. News, scores, analysis? Yeah, I got that, too. We a line drive in the center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. We follow the Rays better than anyone. All season long, we are your hardball hookup. This is the home of the Rays. 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. 
We have a severe thunderstorm warning around the area for Pasco, Hillsborough, and southeast Pinellas County until about 2 o'clock today. Also, coastal flooding, a tornado watch going on until 3. And FHP still has that high wind advisory on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge for high-profile uh, vehicles. They're reporting gusts of over 50 miles per hour working a crash in Pinellas County, US 19 northbound south of Tarpon Avenue at Boyer Street. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Cracker Barrel. It pays to be early because at Cracker Barrel, you can get early dinner deals weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. That includes their signature meatloaf, home-style chicken, and more, starting at just $8.99. So make tonight an early dinner night. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Thursday, April 11th. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Thursday, April 11th, 813-219-1919. Hard work is the foundation of the job site. Boot Barn Work and Carhartt are committed to supporting the hard workers that keep our nation moving. Boot Barn Work proudly offers a broad selection of Carhartt workwear and boots, known for durability and quality since 1889. When the work is relentless, Carhartt is trusted to finish the job. With so much on the line, there's no room for cutting corners. Carhartt at Boot Barn Work. All the talks we've had over the years, including what you've told me about not using alcohol and other drugs, they stick with me. And believe it or not, they really do make a difference, especially at times that matter most. Hey, want a drink? No thanks, I'm good. So thank you, Dad, for talking and preparing me for what's ahead. Thank you for talking. For tips to start the talk, turn to Central Florida Behavioral Health Network at cfbhn.org. Central Florida Behavioral Health Network is a managing entity contracted with the Department of Children and Families. Secrets here for my friends over at Green Tech Roofing and Solar. As a homeowner, I know the importance of having a strong roof over your head, and that's exactly what my guys over at Green Tech Roofing and Solar do. They're the number one roofing solution in the Tampa Bay area, offering free inspections. They offer a wide selection, asphalt shingles, tile, metal roofing options as well. They do residential and commercial. They have over 300 five-star reviews, so check them out. Visit their website, get an accurate assessment. Go to greentechroofing.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. After suffering an injury, you may face many hard questions. What will tomorrow bring? Which firm should I choose to represent me and my family? At Morgan & Morgan, we will hold your hand every step of the way. From our one-click sign-up, mobile apps, and 24-7 availability, we make it easy to get your case started right from the comfort of your couch. All firms are not the same. Injured, the choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. The Five Star Review. It's as important to contractors as it is to customers. Service Titan can help you earn more stars with innovative software features designed to give your customers the most convenient, most modern experience possible. 
Take it from the guys at Rainforest Plumbing and Air. Service Titan has enabled us to give each service call that personal touch. We love it because we know who our customers are when they call us, and we even know if they have a favorite technician. Start earning more five-star reviews. Schedule a demo today at servicetitan.com. That's servicetitan.com. Ah, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audibel Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audibel Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Hey guys, T. Kraz here. For my friends over at Pool Perfection, Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder, the summer months are coming. Are you ready? Dive into the summer with Pool Perfection. They can build your pool in weeks, not months. They're Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder. Tons of five-star Google reviews. And check out their beautiful new website, poolperfection.com. See their beautiful work for yourself. So if you're in the market for a new pool or a pool remodel, call my guys over at Pool Perfection, 727-518-POOL, 727-518-7665. Tell them to Crash sent you. Hi, this is Earl Ron. New South makes windows that are both energy efficient and hurricane resistant. New South is the factory and eliminates the middleman. New South windows are made in Florida. For Florida homes, by Florida workers, because we know Florida weather. Going on now, save 35% off factory direct windows and doors. Call 1 800 New Windows. Running to a meeting or just need to get away? No problem. Download the free iHeartRadio app where you can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free, free. never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. Bye-bye. The home for every pitch of the 2024 Tampa Bay Rays. We are 95.3 FM, W237CW, Pendellas Park. And the mighty 620 WDAE St. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, Hey, Rays Rays fans, free has never sounded so good. Welcome back, James Act 95.3 WDAE and AM620. I hope you're paying attention to kicking it. It's time to give away those tickets to go see the Rowdies play at mm-hmm. Al Lang on April 20th against El Paso Locomotive. And the question is, which basketball coach did we just debate whether or not would take the Kentucky job? There was one coach that Jay and I were asked about. Tubby Smith. Ending up in Lexington as the next Kentucky Wildcats head coach. What was the name of that coach? Give Dugas a call right now. 888-546-4620. Again, 888-546-4620 with the answer to that trivia question that, if you don't know, means you didn't listen to the last segment. Kicking it for those Rowdies tickets. What was the name of the basketball coach we said or argued or debated would end up in Kentucky next as head coach of the Wildcats? Ron Calipari. Uh, I, we didn't talk about this in that segment. No. We're not going to talk about it this segment. But did you see Calipari's introductory conference in Awkward. Arkansas? Awkward. Whole thing was weird. And the thing that was viral that got taken away from it the most was Coach Cal saying, I met with the team. There is no team. Because there's one player <laughs> between the transfer portal and graduation. There's one player left on the Razorbacks roster from last season. One guy. And Calipari just kind of showing you the the, the new age of the transfer portal and everything. Said, I met with the team already. There is no team. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty glaring look into the world we live in now when it comes to at least college hoops, uh, football too, but the rosters are bigger. So you're going to have a lot more carryover even yeah. when the coaches leave. But in hoops, especially on teams like that, remember their coach, obviously with Cal being there, had to have left. He's in Cal- Southern Cal now. That's just the way it goes. Like, guy, there's the trans. You are reshaping, and I know Amir Abdur Rahim said this, and he's dealing with it again this year, ironically, or unironically, I should say. Every year in college hoops, you're reshaping your roster pretty mm-hmm. much. Clean slate for Coach Cal there at all Kansas. We're going to talk some Buccaneer football here. We're going to hear from Jason Lay here momentarily, but there was something that we didn't get to on the program yesterday, and it was something that Tom Christ, I think he brought up a couple of days ago how to address the pass rush for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And what he brought up was Micah Parsons as a guy. And it's there's reports out that the Dallas Cowboys uh, 
brass and people around the organization are just kind of frustrated with Micah Parsons. And, you know, he's got his own podcast and they're wondering if like he's going to be a guy that's going to be a part of their future. And they don't, you know, would you want to pay a guy like that? That's, you know, you're not winning. You're, you're not making it to the Super Bowl. So are you going to pay a guy like this who is certainly not uh, shy and afraid to speak his mind? Um, and you have to wonder, like, is he going to be able to keep this kind of thing up? So Tom brought up the fact that the Buccaneers should, at the very least, give the Buc- give the Cowboys a call to see if they can bring him in to be a part of this pass rush. And your answer to that was, couldn't be farther from the uh, the same as what Tom said. Zero percent chance. It's You're living in la-la land if you think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to trade for Micah Parsons. It's a beautiful idea. I think every team in the league has it, right? Like, if you could add Micah Parsons, why not? And I actually just poked my head out in the break. You heard me, and I said, yeah. hey, D-Crass, before I uh, eviscerate that idea, I didn't mention that part, what was the trade that you had mentioned to get? Like, what was what were you going to give up? He said two first-rounders, this year and next year. And if you're the Dallas Cowboys and Jason Light's on the phone and Jason says, pretend you're Jerry Jones here, uh, Jay. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, what's up, Jerry? We got two first-round picks for you from Micah Parsons. Click. Not happening. Not happening. And I, I told Tom, I go, look, if you're – checking out the projections and stuff, not only would you have to give up some of that draft capital first rounders, but a, a growing young player too at the same position has kind of been what's referenced uh, in different places online. So Yaya Diaby would be the obvious one. So if you're the Bucks and it's two first round picks in Yaya Diaby, T. Grass said he wouldn't make that trade. No, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't make that trade, but no. I think that's the trade you would have to, that would be the starting of the conversation. You would have to say Yaya in two firsts. If you were the up. Eagles, would you do it? With Nolan Smith in yes. two firsts? Yeah. I mean, they just made a big move for Saquon. I, I think mm-hmm. that they'd be open to doing it for a guy like Micah. Yeah. And they just sent Reddick to the Jets. If I was them, I would do it. You've been drafting so well, and you put so many resources into the trenches. I think that and you not only would you make your team better, but you would actually hurt a rival, too. Yeah. That's, you know. I think Dallas would be cr- – I, I don't think they ever would trade in Well, you say that. But you never know. McNabb. I think that's more Eagles likely – Eagles traded McNabb to the, to the Redskins. I think that's more likely than the Bucks making the call and making it happen. I, yeah. I just – again, it's it's a pipe dream. It's it's beyond a pipe dream. Um, When I heard T. Crest say that the other day, I was like, it's, it's not – it's as easy as picking up the phone and just making a call. And he compared it to the JPP trade that was made, which was a brilliant trade at the time looking back on it. For a third rounder. For a third rounder. And JPP was at a much different place in his mm-hmm. career than Micah yeah. is currently. That was post fireworks celebration. Apples and oranges mm-hmm. in terms of that trade and the potential of the Bucks bringing in a Micah Persons. Again, beautiful idea. I'd love to see it. But I think the Bucks are in a position now where if they really, truly want to upgrade and get another mm-hmm. premier edge rusher, and I say another, and that's hoping that Yaya does continue to develop after what we saw in year one. It's going to have to be a guy that they draft and just absolutely nail the pick. More than likely, you and I agree, too, it would have to probably be either Latu or Verse somehow falling to them at 26 and it being, I mean, that's the most likely scenario. And then one of those guys is ready to roll out the gates. And speaking of the draft and speaking of the pass rush, we just heard from Jason Light, Buccaneers GM at the Avon Hill Training Center at one Buccaneer place. And he was asked about the addition of Randy Gregory and kind of the ramifications on what that means kind of for the upcoming draft as well. Yeah, we were just looking for some depth there. Um, however, it turns out, I think uh, I think he even answered he didn't have a his, you know, set on being a starter or he just wants to contribute. He has to earn it. Um, so we needed some we wanted some depth there, but it's not going to affect what we how we uh, approach the draft. We could always use. Um, a, you know, a higher higher end pass rusher. I think every team can, so it's not going to affect the way we approach it. Love that he said that. Love that he said that, you know, and this is no disrespect to Randy Gregory, but I think you know if you're Jason Light, if you're going to be a big-time factor when it comes to the NFC hierarchy going into the 2024 season, you need some big-time pass rushers. Randy Gregory is a nice depth piece, but you know when you call a guy a death piece, you know what you're not calling him? A starter. <laughs> yeah. You're not. And and I think you need depth. I really do, especially at that position. But that has not changed his plans, and you heard him say it right there. He's still looking for a top-end guy, and I hope that the Buccaneers go big game hunting. And listen, I, I don't... I don't agree with what Tom said as far as like the realistic aspect of it, nor I don't think that they have the capital, uh, whether it's draft wise or financially for the Micah Parsons deal. Yeah. Cause but you got to sign him after you trade yeah, for him. But I like the idea. 
I like the idea of getting a, a game wrecker, a game changer. I mean, you look at a team like Cleveland, mm-hmm. right? And you look at how many guys that they had. They had Joe Flacco take them to the playoffs because Deshaun went down. But a big reason why was because of the guy like Von Miller. I mean, not Von Miller. Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett mm-hmm. and, the, and that pass rush. And we've seen this all throughout football. Go back to the the undefeated Patriots losing to the Giants. The reason why Tom Brady didn't win that Super Bowl is because that pass rush. Yes, Eli Manning won the Super Bowl MVP and Tyree made the the great catch. But the reason why they didn't score a ton of points is because Michael Strahan and Justin Tuck and OCU Minori, they had three DNs on the field at once. So go on out there and shoot for the moon when it comes to some of these guys and disrupt the passing game. Turn these teams one-dimensional. If you can do that, you're taking a lot of stress off of that offense, um, and that could really lead to some long-term success for your franchise. I said it once. I'll say it a million more times. He's going to say it a million more, baby. It's a quarterback-driven league. Yes, sir. And the way to offset that is driving the quarterback into the ground. Mm -hmm. So two most important positions. uh, You know, I will, again, hammer this into people's minds, whether they know it or not, is the quarterback and then the guy that's hitting them. And the Bucs are in a position where – Again, they're really banking on the growth of Yaya Diaby, which I'm on board with. But, you know, again, that's not a guarantee either that he takes another step forward in year two. You would hope so with more playing time and obviously not being a rookie anymore. And again, I do believe that'll be the case, but it's not ironclad. And then after him, you don't have any options in terms of guys that are going to, you know, Randy Gregory's not going to get the 10 sacks this year. Joe Tryon Schroenke isn't going to break out. He, He is who he is. Anthony Nelson, obviously a depth piece. So when you're looking at the pass rush and you're talking about an elite guy or looking for an elite guy to be a pass rusher, Yaya is your only shot at it right now. Not to say that, you know, a second or third round pick this year couldn't be kind of like Yaya. I just, off the top of my head, don't necessarily see a guy like that. Like, even when they drafted Diaby, I immediately was like, that's the best value pick that Jason made. And I know I wasn't the only one that felt that way. So now I look at it this year and I'm like, well, I don't see them trading for Micah Parsons. Josh Allen was a fun name to talk about, but he just signed an extension in Jacksonville. Brian Burns was an option, maybe, but that's inner division. Yeah, they weren't going to trade him there. He was sent elsewhere. And what we have now is a situation where, in my mind, and I'll just speak personally, I think it's lots who reverse. Mm -hmm. And if you really want your best opportunity to have another pass rusher added to the squad, not only with a high ceiling, but an immediate impact player, those are the two names for me. There's the kid out of Alabama, too, that won't be there at 26. Dallas Turner, yeah. Yeah. He, you know, he, Braswell's he, another guy people are talking about, but I think he's more I, of a second-round pick. I put him more with the Chop Robinson class mm-hmm. as a guy that could be it, but I wouldn't – like, I'm not going to project that in terms of a gamble, maybe. But I, I look at the two guys – well, three again if you count Dallas, but he won't be there. I look at Law 2 and Verse. Like, that to me is the best-case scenario – for the Bucs at 26 is one of those guys. Now, Jason Light, he's had some success drafting these guys on the inside and the lineman. Here's what he had to say about that. Yeah, I learned long ago that it's not as easy as people think. Some people think is just move a guy inside and it'll work out. It's, um, you know, the guy, first of all, has to be tough. He has to be able to have a lot of reactive athleticism because bullets are flying a lot quicker inside. You have people coming at you from different directions as opposed to just coming off the edge. So you have to be instinctive, smart, tough. You have to be able to bend. You have to be able to anchor. You have to have some, you know, stoutness. You have to be able to play with your cleats in the ground. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Yeah. Cleats in the ground. Cleats in the ground. Cleats in the ground. Remix it. Throw it on a video. Boom, 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 boom. and, And you think about on the offensive lineman side of things, right? Like Tristan Worf's moved over um, this past season. Luke Gettick, he's a guy who they tried to start at a different spot versus where he played in college and then switched him back. It's That's amazing. benefited him. You uh, know that they're open to doing yeah. it with Cody Malk, and they've done it with Robert Hainsey as well. I'm more impressed with what Gettick was able to do than what Tristan was able to do. Really? Yeah. Just because you don't see that. That's why we had hesitation. Like, think about it. Expectations, right? Are you surprised that Tristan was able to do that? No, wasn't surprised. I mean, it was an adjustment. It took some time. We, we heard how nervous he was, and yeah, there was some growing pains. But if you tell me that one tackle is going to go from the right to the left side in the pros, there's like three guys that I gave you like, yeah, probably could do it. Tristan's one of those guys. You're talking about a guy in Luke Edicke at the guard spot that struggled big time, and now you're like, go out on an island, play right tackle? Like, that's crazy. Guys kick inside, not outside. So, Yes, I don't think Luke's better than Tristan, but as far as what was more impressive last year, it was how, and it wasn't that he was just 
okay over there. Like Luke Kedicky did a really good job at right tackle last season. And that is another thing. When we talk about the Buccaneers going forward, Zach, I don't think you put enough onus on they've got their tackles locked in. And look at teams all across the National Football League. They're looking for guys to protect their quarterback. And the Buccaneers got two good ones in Gedeke and Tristan. Yeah, I, I think it's a huge help uh, to have those cornerstones. And again, you have another guy that's flexible with Cody Malk. Love him or hate him. However you feel about Robert Hainsey, he's an option. and Big ball. You can always slide him around if need be as well. Rashad White going to bat when he was in studio with us about yeah. Big Bob Hainsey and his impact and how well Out of nowhere, too. We were like... Oh, okay. Oh, you can tell he wanted to get that off his chest. That big ball. Because we weren't asking him about Hainsey, and he was like, let me just take a second. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, you clearly have seen some things, maybe from us, maybe from others, probably from both, where you felt like you had to defend Hainsey a little bit here. Um, You know, and again, I think part of the thing with Hainsey is he stepped in the last two years for Jensen. We're all aware of that. And I think he got a lot more leeway and, and grace from not just us, but the fans as well after the first season. This year it was like, that can't be the option. And I believe Jason Light planted the seeds of that when he said in the preseason about the Jensen injury, yeah, maybe in the future we'll move Cody Malk to center. Mm -hmm. Like, you talk about ringing endorsements or lack thereof. Well, the GM of the team didn't exactly give one to Big Bob Hainsey. The PFF grades weren't great for Big Bob Hainsey. I love the name. I appreciate his service so far to the team. But, like, at no point has it seemed like the plan is to keep him in the center slot so, again, I, I, I know we've been critical of him at times, especially last year, but the seeds weren't planted by our own watching. It was the fact that the GM said as much before the season even started. No, you're spot on with that. And, and when you think about it, too, let's not make a note of who the quarterback was the first year that Bob was the center. Minor detail. Yeah, minor detail. <laughs> but, I, you know, we talk so much about the comparison, right? Yeah. The the description of what Tom Brady brought to the team and, and Baker Mayfield and and how is this team going to be better and, and all these different things. But when you look at Tom Brady working with the center, he probably alleviated a lot of that stress and Baker learning himself for the first year with the Buccaneers. I, Bob Hainsey probably didn't have the greatest opportunity to succeed. Now, a lot of that does fall on him, but him having a new quarterback in Baker Mayfield that's learning on the fly as well, I don't think that helped his progression at all. Jason Light. You got a few needs, a lot of needs. What do you got? We have a lot. Okay. And that's okay to have a lot of needs. Um, I think it's a good thing, actually. We had made it to, you know, came very close to going to the NFC Championship game last year, and we still signed our guys back, but we still have a lot of needs. I think that shows that we do this right pretty soon. Next couple years we can be, or even this year, could be competing. So, um I always like the trenches, and I think we need help in both trenches. So We agree. Trenches, baby. Throw all of your draft picks in the trenches. And listen, we speak a lot about the quarterback spot. Well, what about the quarterback spot? I, I know locked in with Baker Mayfield. You got Zach's best friend, Kyle Trask, out there still. Locked in this year. Locked in you. this year. The way the contract yeah. was put together and Kyle's rookie deal. Like, mm-hmm. 2024, sure, but that's not necessarily indicative of who will be under center the next few seasons. That is true, but would the Bucks entertain drafting a quarterback in 2024? In this particular year, we look at all the quarterbacks. We spend a lot of time looking at the quarterbacks. Um, I'll never say that we wouldn't take a quarterback because you can take one and be glad that you did at some point. Now, we like our room right now, but uh, we'll take a look at all of them where we already have. And it just it's a little bit top-heavy this year. Um, so, but you know, there's always that instance we would like somebody, like I said, we think he's better than the other positions on the board that we would consider. I don't know if they'll draft. I know they won't in the first round. I guess I don't know. No, they won't in the first round. But I would be ridiculously surprised. Yeah. I mean, we saw, I mean, Devin Leary is a name that I saw maybe late for them because of the Kentucky and the Liam Cohen affiliation there. Uh, I just don't see that happening. There's so many other places that they can go. And you mentioned it, in the trenches, cornerback position, you still do need linebacker help, even though he has lofty aspirations for a guy like Sarasi, a uh, running back, right? Depth there. So offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, secondary, running back. That's five different positions. Receiver, too. I mean, we've talked about that. Like, it's a deep class. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Mike's not getting any younger. I'm glad he's back. 
Uh, I'm going to tell him you said that. What happens with Godwin? Mike's like, not getting any younger. People are ready to trade He's Godwin older. this offseason to keep yeah. Mike. Like, So what happens with Chris? Yeah. Do you, you believe him? last year, too? Trey Palmer? Like, what if he stops waking up p- pissed off? Like, then what happens to Trey Palmer? I don't know. What if he wakes up happy one day? Maybe if he wakes up happy, he'll make the Pro Bowl or return guy. No, maybe not. How about Devin Tompkins next year? This new return game. Yeah. You never know. He did really well. One thing we talked about. Not as a receiver as much, though. No, but I, was, man, I thought so maybe many, there'd be a little more pop there. He did so well in, in training camp, yeah. making incredible catches. He yeah. did have that one really nice touchdown grab mm-hmm. in Atlanta. The guy's got skills. I really like Devin Tompkins. But now, because everything's changed with the return game now, yeah. he could be a real weapon game and a real breaker. asset. A game breaker is true. Okay, we're going to hit this break. When we come back on the other side, we'll look ahead to what the Lightning are dealing with tonight. There's a Lightning player that's sick. That's probably not going to be in the lineup. <coughs> also, who's going to be in between the pipes? Spoiler alert, it's not going to be Andre Vasilevsky. Ooh. And we'll give you an update on the Masters. How's Ooh. Rory shooting? Bryson DeChambeau, Scotty Scheffler, Ooh. John Rahm. We'll tell you when we come back. Tomorrow, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner. Home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Coverage starts at 5.30 on the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. We have a severe thunderstorm warning around the area for Pasco, Hillsborough, and southeast Pinellas County until about 2 o'clock today. Also, coastal flooding, a tornado watch going on until 3. And FHP still has that high wind advisory on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge for high-profile uh, vehicles. They're reporting gusts of over 50 miles per hour working a crash in Pinellas County, U.S. 19 northbound south of Tarpon Avenue at Boyer Street. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Fresh from Florida. Hey guys, Chef Justin with Fresh from Florida here reminding you that Fresh from Florida sweet corn is in season now. And for amazing sweet corn recipes, visit freshfromflorida.com. Fresh from Florida, there's sunshine in every bite. Hey there, Tampa Bay. It's Steve and Elizabeth Holland at the Holland Group. We want to talk to you about the importance of tax planning, or as we like to call it, the art of legally keeping your money away from Uncle Sam. With 30 years of experience, we realize there are tax strategies you may not know about. If done properly, we can save you real money. So call the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, serving Tampa Bay since 1993. 727-228-6449. Recently, a new client called me and started by saying, Mr. Morgan, I really need your help, but I'm just a nobody. Those words stunned me and I immediately called him back and we're now helping him and his family after a terrible accident. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Everybody who comes to our firm at their time of need is a somebody. I grew up poor, but my grandmother was like a queen to us. At Morgan & Morgan, our goal is to level the playing field for you and your family at your time of need. The insurance company has unlimited money and resources. You need a firm who can fight them toe-to-toe. For right at 30 years, we have fought them in courtrooms throughout America. Our results speak for themselves. And always remember this, everybody is a somebody and nobody is a nobody. Visit ForThePeople.com to learn about our firm. Morgan & Morgan, For The People injured visit for the people.com for an office near you hey it's brett from bull oak if you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction then call bull oak today thursday april 11th bull oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy this technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies including research from cambridge university our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment exam even the blood flow ultrasound totally free this is over 800 dollars in value And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Thursday, April 11th, 813-219-1919. 
Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Opening your home to showings means strangers can open anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out. MarkSpain.com for the guarantee offer no obligation that's markspain.com and start packing ladies and gentlemen the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here it's freddie prince jr and jeff died back in the ring for an all-new season of the wrestling with freddie podcast that's right freddie get ready as we highlight the most jaw-dropping matches dissect the fiercest feuds and uncover the latest twists and turns in the world of pro wrestling and we obviously can't wait to hear from you the federation without you guys None of this is possible. Listen to Wrestling with Freddie on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Welcome back to Jay and Zach. Zach Blobner, Jay Retcher here as we come down the stretch of our Thursday program here at 229 on a Thursday. Uh, we head to Augusta where I'm loving this setup, Jay. Are you cool if I do this tomorrow too? Yeah, I don't I'll, care. I'll change this one. I'll get our logo back up. I don't care. We got to have this up. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I've, for the most part, paid attention to the show and this in a way where people haven't noticed that I'm side-eyeing the TV the whole time. Yeah, some people. Right now, your leader through 10, Fox, he's five under. Fox. Bryson DeChambeau is three under through 12. Uh, there's a handful of names on this list. You're starting to get the big hitters out there. Rory, last time we saw, was one over. He is not starting the day out strong. Xander Shoffley was two over the last time yeah. we saw him. He's having a tough day, a tough start. Scotty Scheffler, the odds-on favorite to win the whole damn thing at one under right now. So uh, there's a lot to see. And I know that this was pushed back, delayed because of the weather. A lot of the bad weather we've also seen here in Florida since. Um, so the later tee times are happening. And it seemed like the first handful of groups that got out there actually benefited right. from going right after the storms passed by. Seems a hell. Look at this flag. It is a hell of a lot windier now than it was, what, two hours ago when we started watching these But you're guys? seeing the sun come out too as well. So uh, it looks like. You know, better weather is probably around the corner. Yeah, we'll see if it slows down. Uh, Valspar, former Valspar champ Taylor Moore at one under two. He was one of the earlier times. He's through 12, I believe. So keeping an eye on him. Danny Willett, a former champ, at two under. Uh, there's a lot of these guys that are really, you know, together. John Rahm, Justin Thomas, Matthew Fitzpatrick, also all one under. Hovland, one under. I mean... Again, pretty all grouped together, minus the leader. I'll, I'll mention Fox again at five under, and then you're trying to just not have bad starts. Ricky Fowler at one over. Mentor exa mentioned Xander. He's now at one over, so he must have birdied. Rory's at one over. Uh, Zach Johnson's two over. You, you're just trying to stay under par today and get through some, again, this ugly weather and, and flip on the other side. You still have a lot of people set to tee off. Jay that haven't gotten going yet. I believe Tiger Woods is one of them. He's set for 354 uh, with Jason Day and Max uh, Homa there. I like that group. That's a fun one. 354, uh, excuse me. Listen to those last groups uh, when you have like Harmon, Kepka, Spieth, 
DJ, Tommy Fleetwood, Colin Morikawa. The Gala. Sahith. Sahith the Gala. Where's my guy? Is uh Who are you looking for? Akshay Bhatia. My guy. It's awesome, man. 254 T off. With JP Poston and uh, Shane Lauer. I'm big on Poston this week. Uh, had a really fun showing at the Par 3 contest. Ricky Fowler won that, by the way. And we've never seen a champ win the Par 3 contest and the Come Masters on, Ricky. in the same, same weekend. So, Come on, Ricky. Yeah, he's got a great shirt. One, one thing you can count on, as much as we try to figure out who's going to win and what the scores will be, Ricky Fowler is is a stylish son of a bitch. Is a Ricky. Pretty Ricky. I love the, uh, the polo he's rocking today. He just, he's... He's unapologetic, man. He wears what he wears. He lets it ride. So, uh, yeah, keeping an eye on the Masters. Again, we'll see if the if, if the wind maybe does die down a little bit as these other groups get out here in the next few hours. Um, but the big story so far is definitely Fox at 5 under through 10, uh, really leading the way here for these golfers. We're already taking a – what is that? Okay, it's an iron. It's not really a chip there. Uh, two, yeah, 201 out. 201. He's not chipping that, bud. Uh, those guys, some of these club lengths – it's crazy. Come on, Roar. Oh, he doesn't look happy. Doesn't look happy. Oh, it's never good when you throw your arm. That wasn't uh, the, uh, yeah. yeah. What's yeah, up he, with you guys? Hit the ball, man. Yeah, a lot of guys leaving these shots short so far today. I would imagine that's a lot of the win, though, hitting these balls down. It is. Um, it is. So we're watching the Masters. Uh, the Rays not in action today, but the Lightning are tonight at Emily Arena. Yeah, you got that right, buddy. They're playing the Ottawa Senators tonight, and from what we're hearing from Morning Skate, our guy Chris Grun has let us know that it looks like Matt Tompkins will get the start. Interesting. In between the pipes bef- uh, for the Bolts, Andre Vasilevsky gets the night off. No surprise there. Is Vasilevsky will probably be in there Saturday in Washington against the Capitals. Uh, and then next week, final two games of the season, Buffalo against Tampa Bay, Toronto against Tampa Bay. Uh, it's exciting, man. After tonight, only three games left. Anthony Duclair dealing with a stomach bug. He's going to be out tonight, it looks like. And uh, they'll probably have Connor Sheary step in in his spot on that top line with Point and Kucherov. But you know what John Cooper likes to do. He likes to put those lines in a blender and shake things up. Uh, and Connor Sheary, this is an opportunity for him to show if he gets some chances that he can contribute. And you just never know. You didn't think that a guy like Eric Chernak would get you know hurt last year because of that dirty hit from Michael Bunting. All hands on deck. If you're trying to make a long post, let's not forget, remember when they were in the bubble, Alexander Volkov didn't play until the last game of the Stanley Cup final against, uh, who did they play? Dallas, right? So you just never know. Matthew Joseph was in and out of the lineup. Remember that? So you just it takes everybody to contribute. Alex Klorn broke his leg at the end of the series against the Montreal Canadiens. You don't know who is going to draw in, so all these guys have to be ready because it's It's almost it's an attrition thing. It's as long as you, it's, you have to play 28 games, you know, the max, and you think about that. You're doing that in two months. Every other night you're playing some of the most grueling, gruels, gruesome and grueling hockey you've played in your entire career. Uh, and a lot of times it's like only the strong will survive type of thing. Yeah. And it does feel like at this point, again, collision course uh, with the Bruins and the Bolts. We were talking earlier, Jay, about the NHL PA voting and like where guys lined up. Saw two. They ranked arenas toughest place to play. Number one, Las Vegas. Yeah. mobile And we've seen on TV like it seems electric. It seems crazy there for those yeah, I've home been there. games. Been there for the All Star game, and I, you could just look around and I know it's a different type that, of feel. Right? Yeah, they put on an incredible show. They took what the Lightning do, and they've really put their own spin on it. They, it's all about the pageantry. It really is. They crush it. That place is loud. People are into it. I, you would really, if you're a Lightning fan, if you've ever been to a game there at the T-Mobile Arena, you would say, I get it. I spot on. That's exactly what I love to see because it's not just a hockey game. It's an event, and they get it just like the fans, uh, just like the people at Emily Arena, the Lightning Vision crew with John Franzone and everybody. They get it. It's a show. It's incredible. When you walk through the doors at Emily Arena, if you've never been there before, I don't know if you really understand what you're about to get into because you don't have to be a hockey fan, but you'll walk out of there being Mm -hmm. a hockey fan after going to just one Lightning game at Emily. Yeah, and... To that point, though, I do bring it up because the Bruins in their arena was a top five. Uh, That's hard because place of the stench. <laughs> this because it stinks up in here, <laughs> the, and they have infestation, uh, a rat infestation there. 
Yeah, speaking of other people and things voted in that NHLPA we had earlier, uh, for the third straight year, if I read that correctly, mm-hmm. Brad Marchand is voted as the player you least like to play against but would like to have on your team. I think I said that right. Phrasing. Yeah. You got it. I don't think anybody's shocked about that. So for me, uh, I'm so excited about the upcoming playoff matchup with the Bruins to see. You going back to Boston? It was hard to get you there last year. We're not going there. I'm not going there. It's hard enough to get you there once. Just to let you guys know. I I only can get you there twice in a year. I'll be traveling twice in a year. Or Uh, twice in a 12 months. Not even 12 months. Six months? How about twice in a lifetime, bud? (laughs) I'm not going there. Somebody was like, oh, what if you got offered a job by the Red Sox? I would have said I would have ripped up the envelope and I would have set it on fire. What, what, what's I don't understand. That's pretty straightforward. What's so hard for people to understand? Uh, it was bad. The only reason why I went up there is because it was Army Navy. That's literally the only reason. Um, Lightning can't play them in the Stanley Cup final. The Rays can't play them in the World Series. So I'm Gucci with all of that. So I know a lot of people aren't going up there. And it's so damn expensive up there. No thanks. Lightning, go take care of business. And then in round two, whether, wherever you play, uh, meet you out there, buddy. Meet you out there. Yeah, hopefully it's the Panthers. That was, you know, just for travel's sake. That's an, that's an easier one. They're good. I could make a couple of those trips. Oh, hey, look, listen to Blob. We did. I the whole, You hey, saw the All-Star game. Blah. I'm on board with that, man. Let's do it, man. Yeah, so we got, again, Lightning in action tonight. We'll continue to keep an eye on the Masters. Um. Yeah, man, and I think that's that's oh, it. Oh, real quick, we got to shout out USF Bulls, USF softball last night. Yeah, taking care of business against the Florida Gators up in Gainesville. Shout out to Ken Erickson and the crew. What a win! That's one of those games where, like, I think you look at it if you're the Gators, you're like, all right, hey, you know, going forward, um, they'll be fine. They will be fine. They're one of the best teams in the in the nation. But that win for the Bulls goes a long Massive. way. If they don't win their conference. Um, this is a win where people are going to look at it like, Dan, that was a really, really huge victory for them in Gainesville. So shout out to them. Shout out to USF. That's another thing too with like Amir Abdurrahim where we're talking about the future of the men's basketball program. It's just a lot of good things going on. Track and field. Do you see the track and field team? Yeah. They were one of five teams that were in nationals and the other four were the SEC. Like USF, whether it's track and field, whether it's co-ed cheer, Men's basketball, football, you, women's basketball I got confirmation again. Jose Fernandez isn't going anywhere, and he is reloading and stacking up with some new players. Like, it's exciting, man. If you've never been to a green and gold game for any sport, get on the bandwagon now. I can't imagine what it's going to be like in 10 years. They're going to be not one, not just one of the preeminent universities in the country, but also one of the preeminent athletic programs. There's just too many, too much good talent around this area. Yeah, we are definitely full of that athletes and talent, and it's a beautiful place to live as well, which doesn't hurt. The only other story we really didn't get to today was uh, the latest on the Otani gambling situation, which ironically we just asked Buster Olney about earlier this week when he was on from ESPN with us, and, and I remember I was just like. We, this was a huge deal. It headlined everything and then just went away. And, and I was wondering if that was just how it was going to kind of play out. Like we just buried it. But we find out in this massive piece uh, that he, Otani's former translator did steal not only $4.5 million, but $16 million. Wow. The thing that stuck out to me most was that the translator changed the things on Otani's bank account so that the alerts weren't going to him. So when he was taking all this money out, the alerts weren't going to Otani. They were going to the translator, and he was just, like, ignoring him. So Otani had no idea. And on top of that, the bookies that he was gambling through were convinced that it was Otani gambling. And there was a message or, or a conversation, I should say, that was shared I saw on social media uh, from a reporter that's helping cover the story that said that one of the bookies was like, holy crap, this is going to be really bad for Otani. And the translator responded with, no, it's me. I've been stealing. I'm screwed. Something along those lines. I'm paraphrasing. So, look, I was in the camp that it smelled a little fishy. It was interesting to see if Otani had anything to do with it. If there was some, so. It appears at this point, more no. than ever, that it was solely the translator stealing money and screwing over uh, his his guy, the guy that was basically helping him have a job and a life. Yeah, and it's uh, – when I look at Shohei Otani and everything that we've heard about Shohei – is he's a guy that doesn't, he just likes baseball. That's it. Like, that's his only thing. And he doesn't really have a lot of vices. So for him to be able to do something like this is out of character. And that's why I just felt like the entire time it was more about his translator than 
him. Okay, one more segment to go here on the program. We'll find out what's on the menu. What does Tom Kras think he have coming up on the drive? But first, let me tell you about my friends over at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. I'm looking outside right now. The weather looks way better than it did just a couple of hours ago. So guess what? Why don't you head down to my friend's at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. You can sit outside if the weather's getting nice. You can go inside. There's not a bad seat in the house. It is beautiful in there. Hang out there before the Lightning game tonight. It's on East Jackson Street, right there at the Truist Building. You see the big sign for Truist? It's on the floor, on the floor level right there. You can't beat it. Scratch Kitchen, Craft Cocktails, Expanded Wine Menu, and I said, located just a few blocks from Amelie Arena. Grilled wings, Ebor egg rolls. How can you beat that? And if you're one of those people like, I don't want bar food, I'm trying to eat healthy, they've got that too. Sushi grade ahi tuna, tuna bowl, and their power play salad. An incredible atmosphere. Trust me, there's not a bad seat in the house. For more information, go to topshelfsportslounge.com. Everybody keeps asking, Jay, where can I go to get a drink or a bite to eat in downtown Tampa? My first answer always, Top Shelf Sports Lounge. He just left the office. Gridlock on US-19. Gotta pick up the kids. And the honey-do list still to come. You got enough on the plate, my friend. Don't fret. Lock the doors, buckle up, and enjoy the drive with T-Kraz. Assisting with the stresses of everyday life with a cure of bucks, rays, bolts, and more. Afternoons at 3 on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson here with Jeff Jr., owner of Trajan Wealth, talking about 401ks, and I've always heard that 401ks were great, but you're telling me something different here, Jeff. Well, 401ks are great when you're employed there. However, if you're no longer employed, you probably don't want to keep that 401k with your old employer, and you probably don't want to roll that old 401k into your new employer's plan. Really? Now, now why is that? Well, most 401ks have limited investment options and can cost you thousands of dollars more in fees. And that's true even if you roll it over into your new employer's 401k. You also lose a lot of control by leaving your 401k with your old employer. If the company sells or merges, they often freeze it. That is great insight, Jeff. And if you have a 401k with an old employer, stop what you're doing and call Trajan Wealth, 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor, paid advertisement. Guys, your perfect closet starts with the right finishing touches. And right now, during the light and accessory event at California Closets, Every $1,500 of design, lighting, and accessories you buy earns you $500 toward your custom design. Garage, office, bedroom, California Closets will give you the space that's fresh, styled, and expertly organized. To get started, visit one of their three conveniently located showrooms or visit CaliforniaClosetsTampaBay.com to book your free design consultation today. Tell them T-Crash sent you. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. Hey guys, T. Kraz here from my guys over at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. It's called regenerative medicine, guys. So if you're tired of those achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love doing, you got to call my guys over at QC Kinetics. I did. They fixed my elbow. They fixed my knee. They could do the same for you. No surgery, no steroids, no drugs. They are a thing of the past. Regenerative medicine is where it's at, and they can deliver lasting results. They can use your own body's biologics to restore and repair damaged joint tissue, and that's what QC Kinetics will do. So get your life back, guys. Call them. QC Kinetics. Get a free consultation. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you going again with no downtime. 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. QC Kinetics. Locations in Bradenton, Lakeland, St. Pete, and Brandon. Tell me your boy T-Crash sent you. Ah, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audible Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audible Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. We may all be missing football season, but the Buccaneers are still making tackles, tackling hunger in the offseason with the Mosaic Company. And this year, they're opening a new school pantry to fight food insecurity in Tampa Bay at Bowling Green Elementary School. But this isn't the first, last, or only. The Bucks and the Mosaic Company have teamed up to tackle hunger in Tampa Bay by opening food pantries in the region for years. To put it in perspective, did you know one in four children in Tampa are food insecure? 
You can help, too, at Buccaneers.com slash Tackling Hunger. The Bush Gardens Tampa Bay Food and Wine Festival is back every weekend and now through May 19th with over 75 different culinary delights to sip and savor. Plus, free concerts like Hoobastank this weekend. Save on tickets, fun cards, and annual passes at BushGardensTampa.com. Climbing ladders to clean your gutters stinks. For only $1 per foot, let the gutter experts at the Rhino clean your clog gutters before they cause damage to your home. That's right, just a buck a foot. You enjoy your game day while they do the dirty work. Go to therhino.com and schedule your cleaning today. Good Greek moving is so rich. The superhero movers. One, two, three. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports and Buccaneers fans around the world. Over 20 years and counting, 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. The X Factor, Factor. presented by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. The Boston Red Sox host the Baltimore Orioles tonight. The Sox slugger, I know it. Tyler O'Neill has been on a power surge to start the season as six of his 12 hits have cleared the fence, including four homers over his last five games. He is tonight's X Factor. X Factor brought to you by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. Because he cheated. What's on the menu? Everything that we have up on our page, Jay and Zach. Dot com, including kicking it with Jay and Zach, and just a lot of uh, discussion today about the Lightning and OJ Simpson and Jason Light's press conference and the Rays, including the discussion of who made you more frustrated as a Rays fan in the last decade, Brandon Lau or Kevin Kiermaier. What do we have coming up on the program tomorrow, my friends? So obviously, we'll hit the water and check on the weather with Captain Mike Anderson. Water. Look we at do that wind at Augusta. Wow. Every Friday. I told you it's insane. And it wasn't Three like hours. this at all two hours ago. So speaking of that, we'll have updates not only from the action today, but whatever's happening tomorrow in round two. Be interesting to see how the guys that are teeing off towards the end uh, here, if they're able to finish, if they have to pick up tomorrow. And no, they're not going to. There's no way they're going to finish. Yeah, it's not good news for a guy like Tiger Woods who yeah. is already going to struggle to get through four days of golf. Hopefully he makes it through two. And we When's he teeing this off? Weekend. 4.30? 3.54, so over an hour from now Jeez, still. Um, Dang. Yeah, so we'll keep Dang an eye it, on that. Uh, we'll react to whatever the Lightning do this evening. They're taking on Ottawa at Amelie Arena. And then we got the Rays. They welcome the Padres, not the Padres. I'm thinking about Snell's old team. Yeah. The Giants that are actually based in San Francisco, unlike the 49ers. Uh, but Blake Snell set the pitch on Sunday, which is also the day that we're going to see Dave Wills going to the Rays. Mm-hmm. Hall of Fame there. So um, should be a really cool weekend in baseball. We'll preview that a little bit more tomorrow as well on what's uh, what's coming up with us. And then you have the drive with T-Crass. He's set to take over here at 3 o'clock. Pewter, Pewter Report, Scott Reynolds joins him at 3.30. Darren Rizzi at 5.05. A little Let It Ride action as well. That is what is on the menu. So it's on the menu presented by Barto Ford. Tired of big city prices? Well, if you're not going to Barto Ford, then... You're going the wrong way. At Barto Ford, if it's for sale, it's on sale. Don't go the wrong way. Go to BartoFord.com. No race today because uh, they're off. Give them some time off. So Tom Krasnicki with the drive, 3-7. to seven. I'll be heading over to Amelie after this. Lightning Senators. Man, it's so crazy to think that there's only four games left in the regular season, Zach. And the Lightning inconsistent all year long. They've really found some nice a nice groove for them. So hopefully they can carry this play into the playoffs, we know it's a totally different animal altogether, but uh, exciting to see them uh, playing pretty darn well and see who's going to be able to step up. That's all we've been doing. Uh, that's all we've been watching the last couple of weeks is Sorelli scoring, Nick Paul scoring, Hagel. We know how great Kucherov, Stamkos, and Point have been. I'm excited, man. I can't wait for postseason hockey. There is nothing like it. Yeah, it's crazy that we're so close, too. Uh, I feel like we wait so long for these seasons, mm-hmm. not just hockey, football, everything, baseball. And then once you're in it, you blink, and you're already getting ready for the postseason. Uh, the Rays have a long way to go, but I'm sure we'll feel the same way for them, hopefully, if they're making the postseason next October. <laughs> I just realized we'll I had see. to add that caveat. Yeah, it's a long well, the draft way is a couple away. weeks away. Hey, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Yeah, NFL draft right around the corner. Before you know it, we're going to be talking about that even more little drips and drabs of NFL content uh, until we get closer. Really excited to hear from Jason Light today. A big thank you to everybody involved in the program today. John Mamola was around, walking around. Our guy John Dugas on the other side of the wall. And Chris Mathis, who's uh, texting his girlfriend, thank you for the dinner last night. Hunger Greek is fantastic. Love the souvlaki. Awesome stuff. That's Zach Vladimir. I am Jay Retro. 
We'll see you tomorrow right here on Jay and Sack 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. We are gone. Peace out. Go Bolts. Go Tiger. I met with the team. There is no team. Thank you for listening to Jay and Zach. If you missed anything from today's show, head to the Jay and Zach blog at 953WDAE.com or listen to on-demand podcasts on the free iHeartRadio app. Stay tuned. The Drive with T-Crass is next, live on 95.3 WDAE at AM 620. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE Traffic Update. Still have stop and go traffic on 275 northbound from 60 to Ashley Drive. Also westbound I-4 from the Selma Connector to 275 and slow traffic 275 southbound from Florida Avenue to right around Florida, Nebraska. Still have that crash blocking the left lane. Eastbound Hillsboro Avenue at Anderson Road. And in Pinellas County, we have a disabled vehicle blocking the left lane on 34th Street South southbound after 5th Avenue South. With traffic, I'm Pat Largo. This report is sponsored by Allstate. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate, not one based on anyone else. So if you drive safely, you could save money. Good to know. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today.